going to stress about it. Oh, yeah, there's not a single red light on in this place. Hi, Lauren on camera six. How's it going? Good evening to the viewer at home. Thank you very, very much for watching. Um, we're on the YouTube. We're on the Facebook. This is the Cars and Comedy Show. We hopefully will have a little bit of both tonight. Get the marbles out of my mouth and we'll get freshened up here in just a moment. <laughs> It's been a long day. Just got back home, and we're back here in the studio, and we're doing it. Very happy about that. The good news is, the good news is, as always, right over there is the pretty girl with the nice smile, the nice laugh, brings the energy to the show, uh, <laughs> makes us all look better than we are, and uh, we have you on Instagram at home. But uh, the thing is, uh, Canada Mike, is um, he's got the Canadian flu. Yeah, he's not going to be with us tonight. Canada Mike is, uh, well, I mean, he might pop in. I left the room open, but I doubt it. He was, he sounded like just not good stuff. So we'll check in with him maybe next week, find out how that went. Maybe there'll be a Canadian feed in the meantime. I don't know. Um, but, 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 <laughs> would you believe no one told me to stretch? I'm just doing it. Um, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a late start. We're going to get kicking in a minute. minute. Uh, <clears throat> I'll just have a glass of water. Give me a second here. Sip of water. Mm. Oh, that made all the difference in the world. Thank you. I should have started with that. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jay Ryan. You're back to the Cars and Comedy Show. Steve Ellis will be our guest this evening. He is an actor. He is a car collector. We know him from GVBC. He also happens to be the general manager down at the Haggerty Garage and Storage, Garage and Social, excuse me, uh, Culver City location. That's where uh, one of the places I was today. We'll be talking about that with him. He is currently en route. Not quite here, but should be in a few minutes. Uh, in the meantime, Mrs. and I are going to talk about a few things over at the desk. And I think Will, probably, of all people, Will, should probably get us started off. Thanks, Will. Where do, Will, where'd you go, buddy? exactly on my game tonight it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> i don't think anyone's gonna blame you 
Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the uh, Cars and Comedy Show, like I said over there, but now we're saying it seated. My name is Jay Ryan. Over here we have Nicole Ryan, and uh, I'm connecting over here to the uh, the chats, if anybody shows up on the YouTubes or the uh, <laughs> or the Facebooks, because I'm the the guy today. Mm-hmm. It has been a day for me. Good evening. Welcome back. Thursday, February 9th, uh, 2023 has been a day for me. How was your day? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, crappy, but I'm trying to be positive, so I'm working on my show ideas. I finally figured out what the intersection of existing shows I want to use is, and I love it. It's really awesome when shit clicks into place. Something that's been seemingly yeah. there for a long time, but then all of a sudden one magic thing is like, oh, the puzzle wasn't finished, but now it is. Yes, and that happened yesterday. A lot of that going on. We haven't gotten to talk till the show today. We haven't even seen each other today. But uh, first of all, I'm going to feel a lot better if I put some red lights on here. Just give me a moment. Chad, the intern, was not with us today. Um... The funny thing about Rich Chastler is he likes to find a joke. Whether it's funny or not, he'll just stick with it. <laughs> yeah, it's <I've> <laughs> What I just said, Chad, the thing I just mentioned, Chad, is really a joke for one person, Rich Chastler. And uh, it's his joke. So that, that <laughs> I'm used to that. I know, but it shows what's wrong with me. My goods are kind of damaged, too, if that's what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, welcome back. Welcome back. It has been a hell of a day. We'll talk about all this stuff. Um, I'm sorry that you are not feeling well, but I'm very, very happy that things are clicking into place. Hopefully, we'll talk about some of that stuff tonight. It's the little things that give me immense joy. Yeah, but <laughs> the little things are big things to us these days, too. It's going to be huge. I just need to get it run down. But this is a really good start. Mm. I love it. You... <laughs> Write it down somewhere, somehow. Do a I voice did. note or something. I did. <laughs> I emailed myself. Okay, perfect. Good. Uh, I told you the date, right? As if it matters. It's <laughs> 5, 10 p.m., but uh, February 9th, 2023, in case you were wondering. Uh, Steve Ellis is our guest this evening. He is currently en route. I'm going to make sure my phone is on so that I can buzz him in when it's time. Which it wasn't. <laughs> well, glad we did that. <laughs> Uh, my day. You want to talk about my day? Please. <laughs> my day. Oh, did I mention Canadian Mike is not here this evening? I wish I could cut to him. That's where he isn't. He's not over there. Uh, some sort of flu or something. Here, the email was actually very funny because it like kind of didn't make sense. I sort of took me a moment to sort of decipher it, and then when I got to the last line of like I won't be there, and then I was like, oh, you know, he's kind of his comedy is not necessarily my comedy, so. And there's also a tiny bit of uh, lost in translation because of Canadianisms that I might not know and, you know, oh, sorry, stuff like that. Um, so sometimes I, it takes one or two readings for me to even kind of get what he means. I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes he's off and sometimes he's not off and he just sounds off. So I wasn't sure here. The, the, the message here, the, uh, what do you call the header? T uh, subject line is, um, did, did anyone else see that truck? And I thought to myself, okay, he's, he's trying something here. It must be a bit or something. I don't know. Hey, man, at about 11 p.m. last night, I suddenly got the chills. So bad. I, and he's like Mr. Like he's Mr. Magic Guy these Too days. Too guy. He might be. I don't know. But he definitely feels that way. He's definitely the kind of guy who That's believes funny. in all that stuff. <laughs> so I thought it was going that route. So bad I had to jump in the hot shower to stop the teeth from chattering. Sparing you the details, it was a long night that included my body betraying itself in multiple ways. I am sleeping all day in hopes of having it gone for tomorrow, so I won't be able to attend tonight's festivities. Apologies, and I will miss it very much. Take good care and see you Tuesday if we don't talk before then. Okay, Mike. I guess that wasn't that bad. Maybe I was on the run today. But uh, the gist of it, after back, I think he's got to... I think uh, he's been evacuating. It sounds like I think that. he's prepping for an upper and a lower. It sounds like that. <laughs> for sure. It's been so long. It's been so long. <laughs> it's even since like throwing up, like what that, it's always worse than you think it's going to be. And yeah. you don't, when it's coming, you don't want it. You don't want it. You don't want it to be coming. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everybody. Hi on Instagram. I apologize. I forgot we can do this too. I'm going to wave at some people. Sorry, everybody. Uh, <laughs> just talking about vomit and vomiting. <laughs> And how unpleasant it can be, and surprisingly so. 
What did we we watch something and okay, projectile vomiting? That's a real thing. That was the it's like a Apatow movie or something. I don't remember which one. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, they're mainly rhetorical these days. Not as a rule, but like you don't there you have no obligation anymore. You need to just be happy, do whatever it takes for you, and we'll all support you. You're great. I didn't. I don't always think of how long it'll take me to say things before I start talking. <laughs> that's My a, fault. No, that's actually kind of interesting. Does that mean that your brain works quickly in those moments, and you just can't simply get the get the the thoughts down the pipeline to make the body work? Yes. Ooh, that must be very. And I just found out the other day that my voice trails off, and the last couple of words don't always go a lot. One, I've been telling you that forever. Two, I've also told you I thought that was one of your trade tricks. I thought that was a skill you developed. I or, remember hey, everybody. Let, 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 let me hear I remember <laughs> you told me, which made me pay attention when. My therapist didn't respond to me the way I thought she might. Because she didn't hear the whole thing. Yes, and I finally asked her, like, what's up with that? (laughs) 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 Sorry. Sorry if that was loud into the mic. That's how I found (laughs) out that I don't always, because I hear it all in my head, but I always. Oh, no. It's awful so i think it's a lot and sometimes it's not that makes a lot of sense because oftentimes when you're trying to string a few sentences together which is like moving a train you i can't follow it but you keep on going because you've got the momentum of the train going but i've lost it some it derailed somewhere around car 34 and it's like a 106 car train meanwhile my brain's still Trucking on. You can't stop the train. And I have no idea that anything's falling out. I'm fun. <laughs> no, it's great. I'm thinking to myself, nobody talks about this. This is what your autoimmunity found it. This is what you should have a podcast of just this. Although you'll need someone else to do the talking. Because they can't. <laughs> but like, this is the. Say hello to Rupert. <laughs> this is how people don't know about. So when you're right. like, I have MS, it's like I have to apologize every time I get on the phone Most to people, be like, I sound like I'm not making sense, but I'm, I am. Just please hear me. Yeah, but often you're not, though. That's the thing on the outside. And yeah. someone that isn't intuitive like me doesn't know that you are saying the opposite of what you mean. Yes, but. When I specifically am like, I have an order and I know what to do, it needs to be done, and I want help doing it. Say that one more time, or one more, go, give it to me one more time. When I'm asking for help for something that someone does all the time, Mm -hmm. I feel like that should come across easier than it seems like it does sometimes. Again, it's clearly me. No, I'm trying to. Th- I'm trying to put it into real world application. Are you talking about friends or doctors or like medical people, like medical equipment? I had to return a thing, and they're that like was weird. a giant wheelchair showed up the other day. Yes, the woman that on the phone was like, "Just bring it in." I'm like, "Here's well, the, the deal." <laughs> the problem is, this thing is way too big for our use. <laughs> And we didn't order it, and it's incorrect, and it's a driver situation. Like, there's way more to this than me. It didn't even show up in a box. It showed up fully assembled and everything outside. We came home from Breakfast Club, and it was outside the door one day. And the woman was like, this is on a rental house. If you've used it, I'm like, what? (laughs) Oh, yeah. She was, days are not nice. Like, I'm not mean- for no reason, even though it's my job to tone it down. But, like, people are not always nice. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry I had to deal with that. But I would understand. I, being an able-bodied person, would be very frustrated by, by that, it sounds. Maybe. But this is my new job, part of it. So I can learn for my bearding. It's true. It's true. 
being that you're the face of a foundation now, kind of your part of your job is to like, you don't have to always have it together and you don't even have to always keep it together, but you, you do have to always be trying to keep it together. And that needs to be your whole p point. I don't think anybody thinks you're not trying. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yes, and I like feeling successful, like I've done something appropriate. So if I can, when I can do that, I'm thrilled. It's, it's more for you and the value. I get it. That makes a lot more sense. It's the fulfillment at, that you'll get out of it inside. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you deserve that. You're talking about what you would get from a job or wherever you would get, wherever you got that in your previous life. Is that what you're? Yeah, and doing it where we can all feel good about it. Like, it's all, we're all in this together. Like, we all have to figure this out. So we will. And I want to help that as much as I can. This what? What's this? MS stuff? Life? Just getting along? Conversations. Like, I know I'm hard to understand, but, like, we all have a job to do when we talk. Like... But how did you there get there? Yeah, I guess I know what you mean. Have a more, be willing to actually listen. And not, some people are, it's kind of like it's just data collection. And it's not really, there's no processing of the information. So they can't even do it at your pace because it's, <laughs> the ADD has them somewhere else with their thoughts, right? I've seen that happen yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That seems to be the human condition these days from, you know, we're all so... I find, yes, and I find that everyone wants to help, but they think they know how, what I'm saying before I'm finished. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everyone tries to cut to the chase. And that's often not where I'm going. Yeah. So slow down and shut up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Irene Hoffman, present, checking in late. <laughs> we are so happy you're here. So happy you're here. Hello, hello. And I just got a texty text. Oh, from our guest, just parked. Oh, good, buddy. He's all worried. I think people really think this is <laughs> a real TV show. I mean, because, you know, that was, the, that was the goal. But you never know when you've crossed the line. <laughs> it was probably way before when I thought it was. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Kind of like with, with most things. You don't really, in life, you don't really realize them until you've passed them a bit. And then you've noticed that they're different. And then you look back and you're like, oh, that was actually a while ago. Things are easier to explain in hindsight because you can look at what happened with the whole story. Oh, I wish there was some sort of colloquialism for that or something that we could use. A fireman. Based on vision. I'll think of something. I have to learn how to truncate my long verbosity. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to make a joke. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Way funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Irene Hoffman, if you're just joining us, I don't know what we're talking about. We haven't really started anything yet. Oh, did we talk about my day? <laughs> Not really. <sighs> That's all right. <laughs> you helped me burn like 15 minutes. It's great. Um, also, I really think all that stuff is what people need to hear. I mean, it was part of the intent from the original podcast. Not a podcast that we started. I could talk that. Yeah. Well, I still wouldn't lean on the fact that you can't talk. I that don't don't if there if you don't make a problem, there won't be one. You know what I mean? If you and Jamie Lynn Sigler and Selma Blair had a podcast that you all contributed to, I don't think anybody would care that you didn't talk perfectly. Speak speak like you used to. I don't think anybody would care. Probably not. All right. So just start a podcast with those girls. Oh, and Christine Applegate too. Get right on it. Okay, good. <laughs> Is Jason Siegel booked yet? I just I just looked at I'll the thing. Make sure that's taken care of too. You're hilarious. Sean Bishop and I have had a joke going for god dang twenty years, which was and it started with this Ghostbusters script we wrote actually wrote for and gave to Dan Aykroyd and he read it and gave us notes and stuff. Uh but to do a series based on Ghostbusters. This was when only the two movies were out, right? And it had been years and years. Uh, why did I start saying that? I don't remember. Holy crap. <laughs> it sounds like, why did you want to talk about Dan Aykroyd? Oh, I don't know. Just a 
What was that? What did you just say right before it? My Something about Siegel was the last thing I About had what was? Jason Siegel. <laughs> it's the last Shoot. thing in my head. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Sean Bishop and I always had this thing. Get it done. Get it done. It was this like private joke. Get it done. And I guess I must have said it to him. I was working at David E. Kelly back then, and I probably was like taking in some stuff from <laughs> the old days of television from the executives, you know? And... uh and that's probably where I got it from. And I didn't mean anything by it, but he started laughing so hard in my face of like, fuck you, get it done. <laughs> it was pretty funny. And to this, to this day, still a joke. So whenever he says it here on the show, we didn't explain it, but he said it here, get it done. And <laughs> it got an unusual reaction from me. So funny now. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to imply that it was so funny now. Um, it is to me. Uh, 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 is there any I'm trying to think of our uh, oh you know what yeah there is one thing our buddy Adam Ferrara go to adamferrara.com for his dates he's all over the place and he's starting he's going to be in this weekend he's in some <laughs> go to adamferrara.com and find out where he is this weekend but 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 uh, he's going to be at the Marconi Museum for a comedy night with Adam Ferrara on April 1st. Yes, it's April Fool's Day is what it is. A great day to go see comedy, right? Uh, April Fool's. And uh, and uh, I will be there. I think we will be there, um, definitely at least in support, and uh, more to come on that. But uh, tickets are available on the Marconi's Eventbrite. Also, go to adamferrar.com and check out his dates because he is playing all over the country. And when he comes back into town, he'll be here again to promote the Marconi date and... Um, I think we'll probably both go on Smoking Tire, too, and whatever. We'll make the rounds. Good Lord. So much podcast news coming up. <laughs> Dear God. I'm glad Mike isn't here tonight. No offense, Mike. <laughs> I hope you're feeling better. <laughs> I, hope you're, I hope you're watching this. Oh, that's a nice thought. Feel better, pal. I picture him at home, like Larry Sanders, when Larry Sanders was home, and it would always show him watching the show. You know, he's got tissues all over, but he's watching the show in bed. I picture... Uh, Mike doing that. Hopefully, Candace is taking care of uh, producer Mike. That's Mrs. Producer Mike up in Canada. I hope. Byron Bowers is a good friend of ours. He, shit, was he just here or was he coming back? He just did it, right? We just did it? I think. Whew, they are all <laughs> blending together. Yeah, he just did it, and that was great. But, 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 go to ByronBowers.com <laughs> and, and watch his special on Hulu, or if you're up in Canada, it's apparently on Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Killing time. Let's see. I buzzed him in. Maybe he doesn't remember what number it is. Oh, I, I bet I locked the door. I bet that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> He's been out there for a while. He's just waiting for me. <laughs> oh, that didn't occur what to me. a day! It never occurred to me. Never occurred to me. Oh, good. Take your time. No, no, take your time. I want to make sure the door was open. <laughs> All good, everybody. We're all good. <laughs> Everything's fine. Just taking a phone call out there. Everything's fine. Were we talking about anything yet? Not really. Byronbowers.com. Who was special? Canada. I can't tell you so much stuff I want to. Oh, yeah. Back to my day. Well, coyly. Um... <laughs> Started over at uh, Haggerty Garage and Social with the, our guest this morning. He'll be here in a minute, Steve Ellis. And um, they are uh, – shit. We'll wait till he's here to talk about that one. But after I left there, <laughs> I went over to Santa Monica Airport to uh, hang out with Spike Ferriston and look at – <laughs> we weren't hanging out. We did not have our feet up. But to look at some spaces uh, that the airport has available to build a – Spike's Car Radio uh, podcast uh, studio. So that's in the works. Uh, people had asked about that the other day. Uh, I didn't realize the cat was out of the bag that he was doing that, so we hadn't said anything here. But um, I guess he's talked about it on his show, so the cat's out of the bag. And uh, yes, he's doing that. Yes, I am going to uh, build the studio for him over uh, there at the airport. And it's going to be kind of neat just in the fact that, like, I can't think of a more secure location it's kind of like being at a studio you got to get through the gate you got to get through the key card you got to get in through the lobby and then into, it's very secure 
I remember private feeling felt more secure it's, for that reason. It's exactly where you would be talking about. It's that building. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of a lot of heavy hitters walking through the halls. Even while we were there. So, it happens. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Uh, so that's fun. And then when that was done, I went over to see our good friend Michael Rapetti over at uh, the Motoring Club. I the love new that. Motoring Club. Love that guy. Me too. And uh, what he has done there, you guys, with the new location is spectacular. What's up, buddy? You want to come on in? I don't care. There's no pop and circumstance. Steve Ellis is here. Come on in. Oh, <laughs> come on in. Sitting over there? I don't know where I'm gonna sit. No, sit here and I'll move this. Here, let me move this. Let me move them like this. Look at the look. Doing? Hi. Oh. The microphone. Hello. Ooh. Sure. There we go. Yep. Now bring that mic to you. And I'll move Instagram. Hello, everyone. You can pull that arm. Oh, oh the Everything's modular in this joint. Sweet. Everything can be wherever you want oh. to be. So you can literally, oh, you make yourself comfortable cool. bringing oh. that to you. Would you like a glass of water? Absolutely. All right, you guys. Chat. Actually, we're gonna sit, we're gonna sit here and chat for a minute. Can I use the restroom? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, was like, I, used, yeah. I just sat in LA traffic for. You're the one who got into this. I mean, we had a show going here. We were really getting to some hot stuff too. Finally. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just yeah. Oh. You'll oh, you. towards the green room. You'll find it. And then after I left him, <laughs> uh, Spike, then we did that. Uh, and, uh, oh, yeah, Michael Rapetti over at the Motoring Club. Check out the new Motoring Club space. Holy crap. Um, you remember he was on this show when he first came to town. We met him the day, he literally the day he drove into town. Yep. And, um, you know, he was talking about these grand ideas. And, oh, I'm going to start a thing, and it's a membership. And we're like, okay, great. That sounds great. I mean, add it to the list. There's a thousand of those, you know. And he was like, well, no, I think it'll be different. And uh, and he just had this grand idea. And we were like, look, if that works, it'll be sick. Like, I can't wait to see it. I'll go there for sure. And uh, not only did he do it, he knocked it out of the park. They are moving to a – they moved to a far larger second location. I mean, <laughs> it's it's so much bigger, so much nicer. It's I can't wait for you to see it. You're going to love it. I and, um so because I did – the tour was extensive and, and great, but really the best part was when we sat down and just did kind of a chill session afterwards and uh, got to really brainstorm some fantastic ideas. Some that are like definite, definite like we're going to do them. Like one th April 15th, we're going to do a, a fundraiser for the Autoimmunity Foundation, a fundraiser night uh, where we'll do the show and have guests and, you know, it'll be a fun, fun. like we did at the Marconi, but smaller, more intimate and not a premium ticket <laughs> cool we'll be able to you know anybody will be able to uh attend which is sort of more our vibe um <laughs> we love the marconis it wasn't about that it, they know how to raise money but it was like 150 dollars <laughs> what about like everybody else <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the motoring club is going to be great on April 15th. We'll do that. So put it in your calendars, mark it. It's a Saturday night. Uh, if you got your notice, it is not tax day because <laughs> us Californians are, have been instructed by the IRS not to pay our taxes. <laughs> Sounds strange, but it is what it is. Uh, look that one up. I don't mean forever. I mean like, <laughs> but there's a reason it's not tax day. Uh, so come see our show, come hang out, come support, uh, Nicole and the Autoimmunity Foundation, and we plan to have some some of the autoimmunity merch up by then uh, that will be very fun to announce and uh, have cool. there, and uh, and more exciting things. Those things are like that, like that's happening. Things like that are actually happening. He asked me about something, and I guess my answer because it was different than it had ever been before because we'd been thinking about it for a while was. No, you can't interrupt this twice. <laughs> no, sir. I'm going to have to call you in. <laughs> he asked me about something that, that I, I uh, you know, recently we've been talking about having changed our positions on. Not that we ever had a firm position, but it was just like, not your guy. Don't want to hear about it. Good luck with whatever happens. And, the, and then he flung something by me that I was like, oh, God damn it. That's kind of what we were saying lately, too. And blah, blah, blah. 
So you know how the the uh, brainstorming begins. Like one little thing that might be possible turns into like, well, then what if? Well, then what if? Well, then what if? And then all of a sudden we had like this gigantic plan for this like thing that's like so fucking out there for the future. I mean, he has his hands full for a while, but we're talking about like way, 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 way down the road. Uh, and it's just kind of funny how sitting with somebody in a creative space can spawn all of these like awesome little synapses that weren't there before. And I guess what I want to say is that's a testament to the motoring club and the place that he built there. Um, there were all sorts of little pockets of like just a couple people here and there, someone working in the trailer, two people at the table over there, someone in the corner. And because it's, <laughs> it's like we work, it's like we work, but for, for us, for car people. It's so cool. I like that. It's not new. Anybody who's ever been there knows how it works and they know, you know, the vibe that he's cultivated. But, um, I think maybe I heard a couple of people that were concerned about maybe, you know, moving to such a larger space. How would you maintain that same kind of vibe? I just want you to know he totally did it. It's awesome. Go check it out and see it for yourself. It's not a commercial, not a paid advertisement. <laughs> just love the guy. Think he's awesome. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with that, please welcome our first guest of the evening. <laughs> I like to call you actor, car collector, and now general manager as well of the Haggerty Garage and Social uh, Culver City location. But you're our buddy too, uh, Steve Ellis. What's up, buddy? How are you, pal? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad to be back. Welcome back. Cool space. How long has it been? It it was not that long ago, right? It was like right before the holidays, I think. Okay, good. Right? All right, good. It was like when Sean Sean Lee was here and um, on Heritage Group, I think that's when they were here. Oh, it was a different day than I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I thought it was a different day when we talked about it before. I thought uh, it doesn't matter. Sometimes we have those party shows, and they are a total blur. <laughs> the party shows are cool, though. That was a fun day. I agree. That was, that was a fun time. But this morning when we were chatting over at your place, um, you were like, oh, yeah, well, you know, we said we were going to come back and whatever. I was like, dude, come back anytime. Like, when do you want to come back? How's tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, like, I mean, he'll never jealous. bite on this. And I, this is before I knew Ken and Mike wouldn't be here. And he was like, hmm, tonight? Mm, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> here we are. There's no better time like the present or the moment that you're in, you know. Um, I don't care what we talk about. Uh, I already went through our day, and uh, I just want to hang out with you. I don't care. Obviously, we'll talk cars. <laughs> I'm assuming you'll do some voices for us. That's maybe, always maybe. my favorite. <laughs> Definitely, maybe. I want to hear at some point, not right now, but an Optimus Prime. <laughs> Definitely some CeeLo Green. You can look forward to these. He's great at all of them. Yes. I asked this before, but I don't remember the answer. Do you actually do voiceover acting? You do? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, so I I mean, I moved to L.A. in 2010 uh, for film and voiceover work um, and have been doing it since. Um, still kind of do. Uh, but my main focus now is on the new position. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah so, um, but yeah, <laughs> I didn't mean to imply that you were night, still no. night lighting. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm moonlighting. I've got my agent manager still, but yeah, you know, yeah, don't no, tell Haggerty. No, no, no. Yeah, it's it's always been a cool thing. You know, I hope in the long run with Haggerty, you know, um, the garage and social endeavors going really well, and then maybe move to you know media, be part yeah. of the media size. I know a lot of those guys. You know, Larry Chin and. Um, a lot of the respectable journal- journalists here in the community and, you know, always love those guys, you know, so it's really, really hopefully cool to lead that way, maybe. I haven't said anything. I said that we wouldn't talk about, I, we just talked about all the different places I had to go oh, today and some oh, of the okay. things we did, but I didn't say what I was there to do because oh, I figured we, were, yeah. we would wait. But I wanted you to know that between the drive home and the time I had here, just it's almost weird how the other meetings influenced my ideas for your place. Yeah. I came up with something that's so crazy good. I'm excited. <laughs> they're going to want, they're going to want to replicate I'm, it at each joint. <laughs> I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm excited. No, I really, I really have something that's going to be so good for both, for both what we talked about before, but also what you just said, like, oh. cause they're trying to do the same thing. Right. Oh yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, it's really going to be really awesome. Um, my main <laughs> to my own horn, me and my good ideas. <laughs> No, Sorry. I mean, hey, you know, every, <laughs> everything leads to something positive when you, you know, work with people who are enthusiastic about what they do. And oh you know, uh, my, when you, I, yeah, I knew what I was going over there for, <laughs> but when you opened the door, my eyes were like, no, wait, what now? Yeah, it's it's a lot to take in, and I don't think a lot of the LA car community is quite 
aware of what's in oh the, the place is incredible yeah, yeah no the insane. place is amazing but i'm talking about all right you so you go ahead you go ahead tell me about the place and yeah, then we'll get no, to why um, i was there yeah so um you gotta I, represent your business <laughs> god's sake shut no. up jay so hi everyone um my name is steve Ellis. i am now the gm of the Haggerty garage and social culver city location um which is high-end card concierge storage as well as a social club um and so really hoping to curate um, with Haggerty and the team of Garage and Social, um, a good foundation and a safe place for automotive culture here in L.A. Um, everything from American Muscle to exotics to hypercars to JDM cars, you know, I feel like no matter what you drive, we're all car guys. We like the same rooted thing. And, mm-hmm. and there's so much rich car culture in L.A. Um, that since I've been here, I've just been fortunate to dive into it, meet people like you guys um, and all the people who go up to Good Vibes. You know, it's just an amazing community. And so I really hope to be able to establish and curate a good place for that. Yeah, I think you will, right? <laughs> I mean, it comes from leadership, and you already bring it. Um, I, I mean, it, me— You clicked with everything you just mentioned because you are that way. Is what yeah, you're trying to but say. I mean, it's, it's always been the people for me. Like, cars are cool, but, you know, the sad part about it, cars, you know, get wrecked and, and whatnot, and, but people move on, and— some oh, of the most geez. amazing relationships I have are from people behind the wheel of some cars, you know. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Wow. All so, right. When you have – when you, oh, that's it? That was quick. That was it. I'm fast. I'm a, that's how you know I'm an athlete. I would have answered it. it. <laughs> I would have <laughs> – That's true. That's true. You're, you're like, I'm saying <laughs> it. wasn't me. Must have been her. Whose phone was that? No idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you just turn it off and you put it in your phone. I'm, I'm not saying I've done that before on set. <laughs> I may have been mid scene in a in a – in a film and had to uh <laughs> Did you say mid cry scene? <laughs> that was mid cry Oh no. Oh, Talk about like, a moment. So I was like, it is a I recall, I think I had a ringtone, too. I think it was like back when everybody was like doing songs. For oh, for tones. sure. So, yeah, it was probably like my milkshake. Never going to give like, you <laughs> I don't know why milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Oh, right. yeah, that was a great one. I think I might have had that on my flip, my Motorola flip. The yeah, right? razor phone. I got to take this phone call. My milkshake brings all the boys. Yeah, was, this is called, this is called. Was that Missy Elliott? No, who was that? Ah, uh, no. Missy Elliott had that. I know, I was wrong. Flip it, flip it down and reverse it. Yeah, that was. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. I miss old music, man. Music nowadays, I, I listened to the radio for like five seconds. I was like, I don't even know what I'm listening to anymore. This is literally just a noise. Um, I can't believe you're saying that. I totally agree with you. Everything is just, ele- everything is beats now. It's all beats. I mean, making beats. <sighs> I mean, it's cool, you know, like, I forgot who the clip was. I think it was, like, Skrillex a long time ago had a clip from Jim Morrison where he was talking about when music was going to be made with computers and and technology. And that's great, you Mm -hmm. know. And I feel like, you know, it ties into the same thing with cars. That's great. But we're losing a lot of that feel, that emotion, um, I think. You know, like, everybody's like, oh, let the AI configure your thing. Let the AI make your, you know, and I'm like, guys, like, you also are an artist. You can create as well. You have created this thing. This is now if created. If anyone online. looked at the images AI created when that was a hot thing a week or so ago, yeah, like, Chat GBT or whatever, yeah, 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 don't make it responsible for making a car. Yeah, that's like, weird. But it's also like people are like, oh, what would AI look like if it did this with our human life? And I'm like, guys, like, I don't know why people keep pushing already, that button. Yeah, we're too I'm so, I'm far so scared. Gone. Yeah, I, like, I have Siri off on all of my devices because I'm terrified of it. Is she off though? No, <laughs> she's just not bothering me. You know what I mean? <laughs> she's not bothering, but she's listening. She's I don't always think listening. you can. Yeah, I mean, it's like God, right? It's it's the it's the elf on the shelf. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's it's exciting and awesome. What we have achieved with technology and there's oh, so much it frightens the hell out of me because we, we aren't the first ones here because then it means like all of it somebody's had this the whole time and if we're just hip to it now they have so much more yeah so i remember my buddy was like man do you think aliens exist and i was like i mean sure and he's like he's like man but you know like they probably come and like try to wipe us out i was like i'm pretty sure they wouldn't be bothered just like how you're not bothered with the name that's <laughs> where i go that's like, where I go. You know the Roswell thing in the in yeah. the in the desert, whatever it was at the seventies, sixties, whenever that happened, fifties, mm-hmm. forties. Yeah. When the hell did that happen? Whenever it was, uh, I've always said, Oh, the shipwreck totally happened, but I don't 
don't think there would have been an alien inside because we're at a place where we don't send people in crafts anymore. They're all just drones. It's like kind of just connected. Yeah. So it's like Flight of the Navigator. When I was a kid, there was a movie called Flight of the Navigator. Oh, yeah. And that's where I'm like, it's there. That's what it, oh. Pee Wee Herman had it right the whole time. Oh, yeah. I hate I to say that. that. Paul Rubens that. played the voice of the Navigator. <laughs> but it's it's a great that. Disney movie, yeah. No, I remember that movie. Yeah. I, mean, like, I mean, like, Space Age should be exploration, Star Trek. I mean, if you ask me, I feel like we should be where the Jetsons are now, but yeah, like, I mean, like pretty much what the, that's what EVs do now. You know, yeah, they even sound that uh, way. Tesla and a Prius pass the other day. And I was like, oh, that's like, oh, okay. almost yep. there. But I feel like they're missing a major mark. If I was a manufacturer, I would have put animated car noises as my selection. Like, what am I going to sound like today? Jetsons. Nope. It, like you can change, like oh, yeah. Morgan Freeman I mean, like, can tell you where to go. Well, Take I mean, a ride. Yeah, but I mean, like, imagine, like, if you're having an argument with someone, and you're like, I have to leave quickly and angrily, and it's like your car just. Like, I got to To me, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> mood killer. Yeah, there's like there's no burnout. It's just yee. it's a mood changer. <laughs> it's like not being able to slam the front end anymore. It's like beep. Yeah, yeah right. that's beep. true. That's right, true. You know what? Screw you. I'm out here. <laughs> <laughs> Flintstones. I gotta yeah, do Flintstones noise. Because I mean, like you know, like a real V8. You're like, oh, I'm out of here. It's like, all right, that, that's believable. But then it's just what was the sound effect of the guys with the feet on their floor? The Flintstones. <laughs> whatever that. Yeah, with that. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> whatever that, what that was. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I was like, yeah, I'm maybe, with you. Yeah. I mean, sure. But I mean, again, if you're like, just gonna make it gimmicky, make it gimmicky, right? Oh no! I mean, the 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 the, 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 the comedy writer side of me wants to say that's awful because, like, it, that's some of the worst sketches on SNL. <laughs> it's like it's one joke. Why are you doing it for six minutes? Six minutes. And just then be, you're like, oh, it's a three year lease of this. Just get one joke. Random, random update. Just keep updating me with random little what they call the Easter eggs or whatever. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm so not the guy. When an Easter egg meant finding something cool on a DVD, I was in. It was I'm like, cool, did you guys see that bonus scene? <laughs> no, how do you find it? Well, you there's a secret to... before you could look for it. Bonus, li- yeah, bonus right? lives on Nintendo, you know, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. right. All that shit. Okay, for some reason I was okay the with hidden, it. The hidden stuff in the now game. Now that you can yeah. hack your car to have 100 more horsepower or whatever the heck. I'm a nerd, so I didn't know about any of the G codes, the up, right, down, down, left, right, whatever. Did you say you were a nerd and you didn't know? Yes, because I'm <laughs> a nerd in the geeky way. Like I. Oh, you're know a geek. It. Sure, <laughs> but like <laughs> I didn't know any of that stuff until I met you, and so I just played what? like a stoot. So she's saying she she was like. Kind of nerdy geeky, but you were like super geeky, and then you like brought her. What up. I read from this was, oh, I was a book book smart, and you were like a nerd cheater guy. Is that right? You were book smart nerd. I read a lot, but I was stupider <laughs> in some ways for it. I didn't experience. Oh yeah, that's true. I, see I what you didn't mean. experience things, and I learn a lot through things I've done. Will hunting. Will yes. hunting was. Acting like he knew everything based on the information in the books, but he hadn't lived life yet. And that yeah. was Robin Williams' point. And when he realized that, not only did Will Hunting no longer get to him, it cracked Will Hunting. Correct a mundo. Oh. <laughs> I have Thanks seen. for playing it home. <laughs> yeah, no, I've. Oh, gosh, man, that's such a. It's crazy to think of like the movies that are iconic, legendary movies that you've seen, you know, and then you kind of. You don't forget about them. But, you, you know, like just right now, you're like, oh, this reference point. And you're like, oh, yeah, that movie. You're well, like, it wasn't. They're not. A, if you go see if you go see a movie that you used to love mm-hmm. that you haven't seen in, to call it 10 years, mm-hmm. you're in your 30s, right? Yeah. This works. Uh, it'll be a different movie than it was that you remember because you're picking up on different frequencies. Do you like know what watching, I'm saying? Like watching cartoons as an adult. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. I got you. As a kid, I was Marty McFly, but as an adult, I'm like, fuck, I'm dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. like, Spent yeah, 30 yeah, years yeah, of my yeah, entire yeah. family fortune. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Marty, we're going back. But it works. We're going back. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying. Because you, 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 uh, you relate to different stuff at a different age. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was funny because I remember watching the first time somebody brought that to my attention. They were like, did you ever watch? You ever go back and watch cartoons? And I'm like, what are you talking about there? Oh, watched, dude. What did I watch? And I was just blown. Oh, Rocco's Modern Life. That's oh, that's, what it was. That's a cartoon to you? Go back to the Looney Tunes. Wow. Holy oh, crap. Well, I mean, well, I mean, it's like, all racist stuff, war propaganda, like yep. crazy sexist humor, like nuts. 
They're crazy. I mean, weren't, they're, women didn't seem to amount to much back then, apparently. Every according club to the is Tunes. like big boobs. And <laughs> yeah, like, that's, that's a lady. In the cartoon, <laughs> it's like aspirational cartoon. Yeah. I, I mean, like, it was so funny because I remember my mom would like, you can't watch this cartoon. Like, it's just a cartoon. And I'm like, oh, no, it's not. It's a oh, little, little deeper than a cartoon is. But, I mean, you know, it's funny, though. Because, I mean, I guess if kids gotta, parents got to watch it with their kids, you got to entertain the parents. It has to be funny. Yeah. Like, like for watch, everyone. Yeah, like, SpongeBob, I think, has got some really great jokes that are transitioned from oh, both oh, the kids' world into, like, the parent world. And, you know, I mean, but. I'm trying to think of, like, the one cartoon I was thinking about. Um, oh, not Rock was more like, it was, like, it was, like, an old, like, 80s. Like, back when, like, you had TGIF or Saturday morning cartoons. Um, <laughs> like, some of the jokes. And I'm just like, that was on TV? Like, uh, yeah. that was above my head? Like, oh, man. A lot of the sitcoms do that, too, where you're like, you got to boob it? That's crazy. Dude, uh, something that recently that came to my eyes, uh... You know, with the whole Harvey Weinstein thing, <laughs> somebody was like, "Hollywood's been making clips and jokes about that for years." And somebody like compiled them all, and it's like a half hour long video on YouTube. But it's just like Harvey Weinstein jokes. I was like, what? Like, I go the same way with Louis C.K. I was like, who didn't see this coming? Why was yeah. this a surprise to anyone? Yeah. Has anyone watched any sitcoms of any of these people accused of shit like? Any writer uses it their own life, so it's all there. Yeah, it's plain sight. Irene Hoffman says, real life events and thoughts are compelling. Is Mike under the weather? Yes, badly under the weather. Did anyone see that truck? I guess he got hit by a truck. Oh. You oh. get it? You see, it was a little bit. Now I do, but I still <laughs> a couple times, too. I, I still wouldn't have forgotten it. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Haggerty, I don't know where were we. I don't we're care. Now, you have your water now. Um, no, yeah. Um, <laughs> what were we talking about? Moved to LA in 2010, mm. pursuing acting film. Yeah, but now you're gonna, you know, you're doing what you're doing. Like but that, yeah. theoretically, within that corporate structure you have over there, it could even shift into the media side. Yeah. I mean, and then I said, I've got a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then I didn't tell you what it was. I mean, but everybody should invest. I'm telling you. It's a. It's a I'm, I'm excited, man. I think. You know, to come in and build this and, and set a, a, a stake in what is already California LA culture. Oh, wait, no. you're fine. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. No, you say oh, where you're going. Oh, my God. Now they can see your face. Oh, you're, you're very handsome and nobody could see your face. Oh, and oh my gosh. Mother. Tell the girls on, <laughs> now on I'm your... dating apps now. <laughs> oh, it's all, it's all ladies. <laughs> can, you, can you, is it like LinkedIn? Can I like recommend you? Or... <laughs> Just scan my QR. Yeah, his code. skills are, ladies, he's skilled in all of the following ways. <laughs> no, I mean, but yeah, uh, car culture in LA, it's, it's, it's massive. And the stuff that not only just we're working on, but the community together collectively, you know, I really see a lot of good things I hope for 2023. Um, man, I'm, I'm just excited. Your location over there is sick. Right? It's really yeah, great location. I, they, they're right behind where I did all all of the shopping in the old days. Remember that Helms Bakery building <laughs> oh. where it had every it had HD Buttercup, yeah. it had plumbers, it had every every different version of rejuvenation. The lamp store is over there. I drove by that a lot. Yeah, yeah. so they're on the south side of that, like on the Sony Ooh, side. Uh, and, um, it's a good spot. Yes. Yeah, we were right behind um, the platform, which is amazing shopping and eating options. And then it's, across the street from that's the Shea Hotel. So, you know. But it's uh, the old, like, not gas lamp. Is it gas lamp? You have all those old-fashioned light posts, you I, know? It's I, like that part I'm of town. I'm still learning the Culver City area. Um, but meanwhile, the, it's right across from the goddamn train. There's an elevated train that goes through there that didn't used to when we used to live over yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, but it's it's not... I don't think it's annoying. I mean, we sit in the building and now was, you don't even know what goes by. It was you know? s silent. It, yeah. it was like the monorail versus New York City. Cha-chung, 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 yeah. cha-chung. And, yeah. it's, and it's really nice location. Um, I mean, I like the most about it is that, you know, it's not something off that you can just drive by and be like, oh, you know, see, it's like you have to know where you're going. It, was that a place. road a dead end? It looked like it was going to be a dead it is. end. It's, oh, um, so perfect. So that road's like a cul-de-sac. There's a private school, I think, at the end of it. Did you say it's a cul-de-sac? Donuts on the weekends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I'm sorry. It's I, has, I am not influencing in the right direction. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. But it's, I mean, there's like studio there, school there. Um, and of course, nice high end shopping stuff. So, prime location, beautiful facility, beautiful neighborhood, and it's only growing. I don't know if you've seen 
any other crazy architecture in Culver City. Oh, yeah. Man, like, blown away. The Culver City stairs shopping area, phenomenally beautiful. Um, I don't know the name of the building, but they have this building, and it just, it's incredible. I mean, it looks like it's, like, carved out of marble in the middle of, in the middle of the Culver City area. A marble so, building in the middle of Culver City? Are you talking about the Culver Hotel? The one not, that's really narrow? That, no, like, it's oh. not marble. It's, it's like, a crazy design. Like, it's, like, Culver City. Old or new? Like, new. Oh, like okay. New. Sorry. Like, yeah, <laughs> Culver Hotel. Like, you, like, the I, I found it. Um, if you Google, like, Culver, like, architecture or something, like, Culver City. Let's see. Culver City architecture. I mean... If you, I mean, if it's that important, <laughs> that's a lot of, you know, it's crazy looking though. So I mean, like some of the buildings in Culver oh, City. No, that is different than no. That's all different. That's like, all different. That's, than in, we that's used just to incredible live in. looking. I don't that's, know where the camera is. There are, there, here, let me see for a second. <laughs> that, that looks like the old, uh, like the Frank Geary stuff. Yeah, like uh, the Disney Concert Hall or like the mm-hmm. binocular building. With like very futuristic, like really really cool, clean looking. Um, and it's kind of like spread that's the, out that's throughout. Is that the Colbert. elevated train that I'm that we're looking at right there? I think so. What are we looking at? Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have an amazing structure, and there's also like some beautiful apartment buildings that are up there now. Again, the Culver City shopping. So I mean, Culver's amazing, popping. Not really nice dining. So you're saying it's a nice place to keep your car because you it's can just nice, oh get your car, nice go to, to dinner, car, switch it out for the morning LAX. drive. Yeah, see. you're close, man. It's really all. Convenient. I love it. How do the is how do the how does how do the Haggerty Garage and social locations work among each other? This was explained to me a couple times, but it's I'm not. I, it sounds like it's always different, so I'm not sure I've got it. Yes. Uh, so we have nine facilities. Um, the two newest ones being the West Coast ones, which we have a facility in Van Nuys and we have the facility in Culver City. Um, the facility in Van Nuys is a partnership with Rod Emery and Patrick Long, right. um, and they're going to curate a lot of the vintage and historic uh, racing history in the Sun in the San Fernando Valley, right? Um, into that location, and so it's going to be really cool. Um, they're actually hope, ha- hosting. It's going to kind of influence the vibe of the place, right? right. Is what how it was explained, right? To me. Like I mean, like you know, this area in Southern California has a lot of rich racing history, which is sadly you know, kind of being washed out and, and built over. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's really cool. You know, I'm int- excited to see that clubhouse space once it's fully built out um, and see what they put in there. It's going to be really yeah. nice. Um, but, yeah, I mean. But that, so how do, how do they work among each other? Like so, if I have a car in Culver City, but uh, I mean. In, oh, yeah. So if you're a Haggerty Garage and Social member, um, say, for example, if you were a member at the Culver City facility. Yeah, which, um, and which you, just, you recommend they you know, do. Which I absolutely recommend you do. Um, but if you were to be in Miami for an event, um, as a member, you can go to Haggerty Garage and Social and say, hey, this, they're having an event. I can stop by. I'm a member. You can stop by use the facilities. So it transfers throughout all of our network. So you can go Toronto, Chicago, uh, New York, uh, Miami, um, Del Rey. <laughs> there's, a, like, there's a lot of them. And, they're all unique because they all have different ones. Like one has uh, lifts you can rent to work on. Um, we have our the Culver City location is going to function as a media hub. Mm-hmm. Um, Van Nuys has the Rod and Pat curation of history, and then um, you know Toronto like has a restaurant. Like this, they're so fast and different, and it's really cool. Awesome. Like I haven't even got a chance to tour them yet, so I'm hoping you know I get to. Have you? You well, you've been to the. I, I saw yeah, you at yeah. the Van Nuys yeah, one, Van and then Ice. yours. So yeah. just those two. Yeah. So right now. Um, uh, Dan Havis is the GM at the Van Ice location, and he and I, are, with our teams, are just piggybacking each other and backing each other up. You know, it's I think you know people don't underestimate how big car culture is here in LA. And you know, we just had the Van Ice uh, Cars and Coffee, Cars and Caffeine event, and I think we had like two hundred fifty-ish plus people that came through all the way. That like was the, the first one. Yeah, we start we opened at open nine, to the public and the, anyway. The parking lot was full at like nine thirty, I think. Yeah. You know, and so really great turnout. And I was still competing with, you there know. There was a turn, the, the, the turnout for the private one, the small yeah. private one was huge. Yeah, and, and that's what's, you know, incredible. And that was mostly word of mouth. You know, it was like people just were like, hey, what's going on? We're at this event. We go to the next one. And that's what happens in L.A. is, you know, people talk about their experiences and the places they go. And they tell their friends. And those friends, oh, that sounds good. I mean, Newcomb's Ranch, good vibes. Look, you know, it's. It's weird how grassroots actually still works in, in, in this world. Yeah. And especially because. And I, marketing doesn't. Well, it's weird. Well, Grassroots works more than marketing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, more real. It feels real. Yeah. I, I mean, I think what the element that I like having at the Garage and Social is 
really myself because I feel like the people, the cars are cool. Meeting the people, really great. You know, like, hey, my name is Bob. I came in and got this car. Bob, tell me about your car. Oh, God. Bob's story is different from my story. It's different from your story. It's different from the next guy's story. But they're all car centric, you know? And right. It's, and it's mm-hmm. cool because I don't know everything. I've not lived everybody's life and so you know really getting to ch- sit down and chop it up with some of these guys is incredible like mm-hmm. uh, Steve Beck at Checkpoint Automotive you know just talking to him for five minutes and I'm just like bro like somebody get this guy a camera and let's just like go through car history because there's so much cool stuff like I mean imagine stories Jay tells imagine the story you know all these old race car drivers tell and they're none that will ever be relived again because just the world is different mm-hmm. you know and so I I love sitting down and listen to an old timer talk about back in my day and, you know <laughs> you know racing on and on the holland before it was you know littered, littered with houses and you know racing in the salt flats in the deserts you know like all these stuff that i love hearing that shit too because that, yeah. that's the so-called car culture that i fell in love with yeah it's like from texas you know in around the world some people are like, what are they doing in america what are they doing and so much, and it really comes down to what are they doing in california mm-hmm. And so it's crazy to see how the much... world's fastest Indian. He was on the other side of the world, Burt Monroe, but he was like, "This is what they're doing out in Bonneville. I gotta get there. I gotta run." Yeah, and you, and he was you the world's fastest the world. Indian. Yeah, yeah, it's like you come here. Actually, I just he had no saw money that for movie. that trip. That movie's fantastic. Yeah, I just recently, actually, I think in the middle of the pandemic, watched that movie. Did you like it? I loved that movie. Yeah, I love that movie. Um, I just love all. all Hard not to like Anthony Hopkins, but the, <sighs> the story's great. Yeah, uh, and it's but, a true story. Yeah, but that and all automotive based media i mean even throw fast and furious in there i'm a fan because it's like oh, i know it's like you you much as you want to say like i'm not gonna watch this it's all over this but it's like fast and furious 35 vin diesel's going ha- to space. have you have you still seen it. them all i have seen them all no i have seen them all oh sir i have to i had to this, the, the, even had the to. calvin and hobbs <sighs> i did Oh my the God! There's Cal- a couple of those. The reason I saw the Ho- Hobbs and Shaw is because one C- Hobbs of- and Shaw. Cal- <laughs> Cal- <laughs> Calvin well, Hobbs well, is the peace sticker. Why don't you bring that up? Bring that up? So Hobbs and, Sh- Hobbs know, and Shaw. Yeah, the reason I know about that show is because I had to dub over Dwayne the Rock's voice for him. For, for him, ADR, ADR oh, hilarious. Like, and I just remember like reading the line. I was like, "Oh, this is." And they're like, "Can you sound like Dwayne the Rock Johnson?" And I listened to him for like four days, like just his voice. And I did it, and the guy was like, "Oh, it's perfect, great." You know, then I will contact you. I was like, "Cool." Never watched the movie. I want a flight from Louisville back to LA. Oh, headphones. Like, and I was like, Hobbs and Shaw. I was like, You're back in the booth. That's boop. my voice. <laughs> I was like, Boop. And I'm like, Watch the movie. Right? And then he says the line. I was like, Oh, yeah, that's my voice. Hilarious. <laughs> I was like, Oh, yeah. I was like, Oh, yeah. That's funny. But um, I mean, it's just crazy. Like, that happens a lot, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think a lot of people don't realize that they're like, other people get hired to finish ADR for, you know, a lot of the big time celebs. Like yeah. yeah. So it comes in hand. Yeah, good for you. Uh, do you? I mean, I don't know how much we can talk about this. It's not even real yet, but I mean, I mean, they they are looking to expand and and open up a uh, podcast space, right? Correct. So the Culver City location does double as a media hub with cars. Um, so with that, we'll have a podcast studio, media room. Um, we'll be working with Haggerty Media pe- media people as well as curating um, the Social Club in itself. Um, driving, saving driving culture, and, you know, really backing up what has made a lot of us, a lot of our lives, made up a lot of our lives, um, is the automotive industry. And, you know, I love the Peterson Museum. Um, I think it's, obviously, if you've never been to the Peterson Museum, I don't know what to tell you. It is the most beautiful automotive museum I've ever seen, personally. Mm. The only one visually that I think competes would be like, Maybe the Porsche Museum. Oh, that's in, funny. In Germany. Yeah, or the Zentrum, that BMW thing yeah, is pretty yes, incredible. Thing. Yeah, and I mean... But you're going to the source material there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're going to the source, which you expect. You know, you look... <laughs> they spent billions facility. of dollars yeah. on those buildings. <laughs> <laughs> like, I expect that I go to, you know... Uh, where's Ferrari? Mar- Marinel? No. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Mom. Ferrari? Uh, I was, I no, no, no I, I have nothing against Ferrari. Um, but yeah, you know, it's like you go to their facility, you expect it to be the ultimate curation of their vehicles. How long have you lived in L.A.? When did you move here? 2010. Was the Peterson, did it already look like it does, or was it still the old Peterson? Did it have the monster truck outside? It was on just, Fairfax? just finishing renovation. So it already had that crazy wraparound was, yeah, thing? Yeah, because I, I remember driving by one night, and when they just had finished the renovation, they used to light it up at night. Yeah. And 
They don't do that anymore? I totally I remember they, that. I think they do. Okay. Uh, but I, I don't, it was it crazy at first. Yeah, I remember that. Lights are bright and yeah. brand new. And right down the street, of course, is LACMA. And so you have the, the street light thing. Uh, that was the first display. museum done. Like when the, the, I thought they were nuts for doing that, but they were like, no, it's part of a 10 year plan and whatever the fuck. And then all of the other museums, you know, the Wilshire has been torn up ever since. Yeah. It wasn't when the Peterson was done. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, now, because what yeah. they do, they banned the metro station now. Yeah, I think it's so. That's right why they're, they're that's right why the road's the been torn yeah, up. Yeah. And it's, I mean, but that place is going to be amazing once it's finished. I mean, totally. It's going to be, it's totally going to be the, the kind of uh, tourist mecca that I think they want it to be. Yeah. Whoops, it is. But I mean, that's, <laughs> honestly, that's like, Kind of what I expected out of Los Angeles. When I moved here, I was kind of shocked that it wasn't already like that. I want to go back to why you think it's so good looking. Because I well, I personally, and this is going to be an unpopular opinion, and I'm very sorry to my friends at the Peterson, but I have to be honest. I don't like the new Peterson as much as the old Peterson. Oh, Even I- though, as an experience, yeah, you're getting to see more. Of course, I, get, I know why they had to do it. But architecturally, that was a very cool and unique building before. See, I never saw that. I know. I, saw, they, I mean, the, I feel like the Peterson <laughs> now should also been, curate what was before. You know, like they that's have, how I feel about well, this it. Is the Peterson they before. took they took what was a cool architectural, interesting space, and they made it just a box, and that bums me out. I mean, because even from the outside, you know, Biggie Smalls was murdered, murdered there, right in front of the building. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's like there is a lot of L.A. history. The Grammy because the Grammy party was there. Uh, there's so much history that goes into the ah whatever. I just I don't get it. I don't understand it. What does I, it represent? I, mean, I think perhaps it's never been explained to me. Maybe I'm just stupid. Surprise. No, I mean, I, I feel like it's like why the wisest thing I've ever been told is it's like things tend to change for the times that they represent. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's well like, that's true. It's like as we as stuff has moved forward, you know, it's like you got to be. New and relevant, always, constantly, and especially like the Pearson. It's like, man, like they have. Where else could you go and see any of some of that stuff? I no, mean, what they're doing at the Pearson yeah. these days is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, if anybody at the Peterson's listening, man, just dive into some more of the local car culture. You know, like you've got low riders, you got hot rods, and they've curated, they literally they are doing curious, all of that yeah, stuff now. Yeah, that, and that's like, you know, I, man, the more you can do, if it's got wheels. There should be a space for it at the Peterson. You know, it doesn't matter what it is, exotic, rare, new, you know, put a Prius in there. 20 years from now, it was a Prius. You know, we made fun of the Tesla exhibit. I was like, why would I, they, you know, they invite you to come to the yeah. different thing. It was like, I don't know why I would go to that, but I went to the preview before, you know, the press day or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I spent a lot of time there. I thought it was very cool. I learned some stuff. I mean, it was very interesting. Mm-hmm. They had they did it in a unique way. Saw some shit I never saw the, before. The pull apart. The Explodo car yeah, was amazing. The Explodo view, incredible. That and then the brain that was hanging from the ceiling, the central nervous system yes. of the car. Yes. Incredible. I All think, the wiring for the entire car, but no car. Yeah, no car. And oh, it's a lot. Cool. Yeah. So it looks like yeah, you know, yeah, like I mean, something that would you would wear on your head. Yeah. So you can see how things work. Mm-hmm. With, yeah. And every That's single cool. part of the like the entire car is there. There's nothing missing. So that means every single thing is every, active yeah, somehow. Exactly. exactly. I it's mean, really cool that people too much can see how it goes together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was neat. Because people, I think people don't realize what goes into manufacturing a vehicle sometimes. So seeing those explosion cutaway cars is cool. They had a um, the orange R8 that was in the lobby that mm-hmm. was, oh, man, that was so cool. Well, the Tesla one was neat to me because I thought, oh, they will, obviously they didn't include a lot of parts. And then I was looking at it with Alex Yust, you know, part of, he's one of the mm-hmm. curators. And, uh, and he was like, well, no, I, th- I think everything's there. And, and I was like, oh, wait, there's just fewer parts. And that, that's kind of what they're showing you. Yeah. And that sort of blew me away a little bit. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't hate the EVs. It's just the, like when you're a car guy, it's like the reason you connect so much to cars is because there's feel, there's there's theater, there's there's drama, there's sound and smell, and the, and they've just kind of sterilized that with the EV. And I feel like even you know, oh, we put a speaker inside that makes V8 noises. It's like I would rather you not do that and just embrace the future of saying if you're going to move away from the vehicle, move away from the vehicle and just don't go crazy with it, like. I mean, not to offend anybody, but I feel like it's like the vegan vegetarian thing. It's like, why would you name your dishes after meat after you so don't quote unquote don't like? Yeah, you know, it's a weird eat. one. So you know, do that. Like, just if you're gonna be EV, go crazy with it. Go space age. Don't even aside from tires and wheels, don't look back for anything else for reference. I kind of agree with you. Eat the food pellet. Don't make it look like a 
don't give it grill marks like it was a yeah. chicken yeah. on the yeah yeah uh, yeah I get I mean, it because I mean but, like I drove that uh, Lucid Air Sapphire the other day blown away mm. absolutely blown away why because unconventional body designs completely unique I like, oh I like I, like I think it's hatch, good looking right yeah and you get in the car and everything's just, somebody here just got one there's one in the garage the wagon and it's so good oh looking. it's just it's just you get in the car and it's like okay this is this is the future I'm about it mm-hmm. like fastest thing I've driven. Well, yeah, six hundred horsepower insane. or something. No, it? I drove like the big one. Oh, excuse me. And that was like I literally felt two vertebrae in my spine pop when I like. Oh, but it gave you a chiropractic oh, adjustment. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I was like, oh, oh hello. <laughs> That's Just hilarious. Gone. Can you imagine different seat settings for different? Like, oh, your wife needs hers, so it's in a different place. <laughs> you have a oh, herni- got you it. Have, you have a herniated disc. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Watch mode. Right? Like any sci-fi movie, you just plug him into the little thing. Oh, he's got this, this, and this. And then <laughs> car just like twitching twitch I mean, around. A Hyundai will give you a back massage these days, so or Genesis. Still. I mean, we, we've come a long way, but I think we have a long ways to go. Um, mostly, I feel like we're hindered by government law. You know, I feel like the DOT is a joke. Oh, okay. You're anti-government. <laughs> is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> Put I'm that not, on the I'm record. Not I just, I'm not <laughs> anti-government. I just feel like if you have people making decisions for the masses who have a vast disconnect like yeah you know, the what was it the audi laser headlight thing there's a amazing th- technology why are we not researching and incorporating that more well dot has a problem with it you know yeah. it's like ate super blue porsche bought into it remember they were gonna yeah. they were it was done it was in production they had to spend money to take it out of production yeah and then you know like like the fact that porsche's uh going into the synthetic fuel you know realm, like all of this technology like Yes, yes, but yeah. you know, I, I feel like it's like once you remove some of those checks and balances, you'll have some. We'll see more forward progression. I guess you could say. When you when you talk about the electric car, where like either do it or don't do it, whatever you do. What about the Porsche Mission R? You know that race car. Oh, I'm a fan. Okay, you, the one that Lieberman like, and Reggie went to Mallorca uh, to oh, go ride along the I, track. I, okay. I bothered Johnny and Reggie when they came back. I was like, "What was it like?" What okay, was it like? me too. Was like, that was my jam. Okay, so if that's an electric car, holy. Balls, I'm in. But how do we do that at like the consumer level? Like, where's that? And like, a there's got to be somewhere GTV. in the middle. I don't know. But do you know what I mean about this? It didn't have any or anything. It made its all its oh, own noises. Thanks. You can hear the suspension moving. Like, it was almost like an electric aerial atom. You know how an aerial atom you can hear and see and hear like all of the yeah, it's alive all the components and components and the pieces to it. Yeah, but there's a, like a there's like a weird kachunk kachunk that, that there's yeah, a... <laughs> it's, well, like you say it's alive. Like it it has, and that's what I feel like the EVs are missing. They're missing that personality of whatever it is they are. Instead of just trying to look like a potato, mm-hmm. you know, it's like man, that, that like, mission R's got soul. Like I want to yeah. I want to know what that thing is like. I, I really what do. it's what like, it's possible. I, I want to see that. On the consumer level, like I want to see those things run on the street. I want to see them up crest. It's just Think, that's not an EV to me. That's a sports car that has evolved beyond what we know a sports car to be. It's it, I don't even think those are EVs at that point. I have no idea what the um, engineering is on that thing, but for me, I look at it and I go, "Wow! If that was a gasoline-powered car or whatever, a, you know, a, a fossil fuel burner, <laughs> <laughs> it would be wicked fast, wicked like the it, it, incredible traction." The G's would be lateral G's would be blah, blah, blah. and then I factor in it's a goddamn electric car. All of that weight is all on the bottom. It, it's completely different physics. It must be able to do the impossible. I mean, you, these cars nowadays, man. It's Remember just, that old commercial? Like it's going upstairs because yeah, because <laughs> the, the 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 G force, the downforce. I mean, like, just I, I wish the only thing I you know I don't wish immortal. I, I do not wish immortality. Man, no, no, you don't want man, that. Man, I'd love to see what, you know, 2060 cars look like. I'd love to 2060? See. You will. Oh, you don't th- You mean you or the world? <laughs> I don't know. You or the world? It's a, it's a crap shoot at the moment. <laughs> it's like 50 <laughs> 50. I was listening to a podcast on the way here and I was just like, well, I put some things in perspective. You mean for the world? You don't mean you, sir. But yeah, I mean, I'm hoping, you know, I'm around for a long time. Okay. You can't get rid of me, but I mean, you never know. I can't tell cool. what you're saying. It'd be cool to see stuff in the future. That's all I'm saying. That's that's what I'm saying. It's cool to see stuff in the future. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, because you think of that mission or now, like what it looks like now. Oh, like once today. it's once it's refined and developed. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. What, what does that look like 
50 years from now. And when there is a, a, a Carrera Cup or whatever the equivalent is of nothing but those things running around. Yeah. Oh. And, but I mean, like, racing in itself, like, I feel like Formula E is a little gimmicky. But I Oh, mean, I'm so not into it. And I, I, I know that I'm supposed to be. And, and, and I recognize that it's cool. But to me, it's that Star Wars, the, the bad Star Wars where they're <laughs> – it's the flying, flying racing right? one, whatever that thing was. Good Bob God, races. was I over all of Bob that. I was like, this is the worst <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my life. I, I mean, the thing with the mission, with the Formula E part is it's just like, guys, like cars at that level, if we're really going to do that, they should be like the LMP, you know, Le Mans. Like it's just go for it, out. Go for broke. Throw it to yes. The let's see what you can we really need, do. I'd love to see a racing lead that the FIA is like, your car can be this long, this wide, whatever you want to power it with. Right. Bring it. Like, yes. You know it. how the colleges do with like the solar cars or the wind car, whatever, you know, they're like, oh, just here are the parameters. Go. Yes. I'm yes. in. That's what I want. Because, like, like, we should be there. Like, Formula One is a pinnacle of motorsports, but it's like, imagine if Formula One didn't have a rule book. How much <laughs> oh, Jesus for, Christ. But we all know racing technology trickles down to production cars. Yeah. I was explaining that to my roommate last night, and she just didn't understand. She's like, what are you talking about? I was like, you just don't understand. And she's like, I don't get it. And I was like. Most anything that she probably interacts with in her car was at one point racing. came from. Yeah, yeah. I was like, disc brakes in the front. You know, it's a- like, ABS. Yeah, ABS. I mean, that came from aviation first, but I Black think it was. paddle shifters, you yep, know, it's like yep. all the stuff comes from racing. And it's, so if we took away the limitations that we put on racing now, how much cooler and quicker would things trickle down? So what do you want to get rid of? The track? The ref- the, uh, I love the, the, the flags? No, I love the tracks. I love, I love <laughs> get the Get rid flags. of the caution? I just, I want to, I mean, I thought the budget cap was kind of whack. If we're, we're already the most expensive thing in the world, let's just, again, if you're going to do it, do it. Yeah, that's a weird one, too, but I think they were worried about literally pushing the entire global economy, right? Because theoretically, trickle down, same thing like you said. Yeah, Okay. but race car. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I grew up in a gender, or my parents anyway, when like the best athletes in the world made $100,000 a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were grateful for it. And some legends. Of them. Yeah, the legends, legends. Nobody's right. going to remember some of these dudes. All five, different years, now. now. Yeah, they used to work hard. LeBron retires. Nobody will. Nobody will. Nobody care. I think Jordan, at this, Jordan, I think he might be in the books for good now. Jordan, yeah, Jordan, Jordan. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, but well, I mean, like Jordan, you know, people talk about Jordan. It's funny how in just ago. twenty years, Jordan is much less of a thing since Kobe and LeBron and a few others. Yeah, but I mean, that's like you know, with the Peterson Museum, as time progresses, we adapt to what. So you're saying I shouldn't celebrate the old department store it used to be? No, absolutely <laughs> you should. I still, I still celebrate service merchandise because that was fun for me to go to the mall and go to service merchandise and my mom would go look at house stuff and I'd look at toys. Like you could buy stuff. everything from a ra- radio control car to a diamond ring. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, but you know, now service merchandise is gone. And where oh, they are? Amazon. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. You know, that everything sense. has evolved. And like, it's like those funny things where, uh, you see the kids on YouTube videos, and they're like, I don't know how this tape deck works. And you're like, oh, yeah, uh-huh. you got to push physical what? buttons. <laughs> they're like, on. I need another piece? Like, what? <laughs> There's a, co- a comedian that has a whole bit about camcorders. Oh, yeah. The old, and like it's a hilarious. Video camcorder, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, people don't know what they are. He picks up a stool, and he's like, all of our dads mm-hmm. did this in the audience yeah. when we had plays. It's so funny. It's like, like everything you think about. Like this was is the camera, the phone, the computer, the navigation. I mean, but again, how much further would we be? If we where do you want to go? That's where I always want to. I'm like, I'm all for the future, but where do you want to go? Because the movies, from my experience, it gets worse. No reality. (laughs) No reality seems to mimic the movies. Is what seems to happen because the movies give something people to like. Oh, I I love that. All the swiping from Minority Report that became real. Guess what? It wasn't a good idea. Everyone's all like, and then they were like, oh, that's just screwing with their brains. Make it go the other way now. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll do this. this Now it's swiping. Now everybody swipes. What the shit? It's not good for the neurological system, I'll tell you that. No. Nope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're getting blown up over there. I, you are a very, very always, important person. You know, Can we see who some of them are? Are any of them celebrities? Probably my mom. Oh, well, that's even cuter. My mom, she'll, I'm surprised she hasn't called me yet today. Mom, I'm, I'm on TV. Why I haven't called. I thought you were getting Oh, shout out cars. to Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay's here. Lindsay? Yeah, she, oh, she commented on uh, your post from the Garage and Social. Lindsay's your mom? No, no. She. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, sorry. sorry. I was, I was dead. No, no, no. 
um, she works with Haggerty in the motorsports, and um, she was just at the facility recently and visiting. And Wait, out. who? On uh, no, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but she, I didn't know she. Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, right? Yeah. No, because somebody asked me, "Were you there today, Lindsay Jesh?" Yep. Oh, awesome. I just started with Haggerty. Okay, great. Yep. Well, there's a very long thing for me to read. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, she's oh, awesome. look who's here. Look who's here. Uh, well, Irene's still here. Love the architecture. Love Frank Geary, too. But, whoops, it's easy. All right, try it again. Hey, kids, much love from the great white north. Here's sick Mike Chisholm from home. And, wait, why isn't this working? There we go. Also, I wonder if kids today will have a nostalgic connection to some of the EVs when they're older. I mean, I so. why would you? I mean, it's like the iPhone. That I feel, and I feel like that's what we're also not anticipating is it's like, what do you do when this is obsolete? We throw it away and get the new thing. Yeah. We throw it away and get the new thing. No, I don't really see people, oh, man, it's a Gen 1 Tesla. Let me restore it. You know? Let me modify it or Re- whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's just, you're just going to say, well, I've used it. And Can I tell you what I think? Maybe. We recycle them or we trash them. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's like, where does Maybe where does it'll be go? Mad Max or Cuba style where we'll have all these electric chassis. And people will put motors in them because the chassis are good, right? Like Tesla chassis is good yeah, and all that I mean, stuff. It me solid. I, you know what I said with EVs <laughs> is I'm like, where's as a kid, you think about like the car toys I had. And I remember one of the futuristic toys that I think Hot Wheels had made at the time was like a thing where you could, it had like a skateboard bottom and you could put like the car on top or sorry, you could put like the car on top. You could put like the truck on top. You, you Whatever it was, like the same body. But you could like, oh, I gotta take a truck today. Put my truck on, you know. Mm. It's like, I want that. Yeah, I want that in my garage. You do. Like, oh, I gotta move today. Oh, let me use the truck, buddy. It's like, mm. oh yeah. I have a truck, and then I, I go home. I'm like, I need a car. Yeah. The modular future that seems to be the way sh- things are shifting. Like, I want one thing that can do everything in the world. You have got to stop that. Oh, it's driving I me know. nuts. I didn't even know it's on. Throw it across the room, or I'm gonna. It's <laughs> <laughs> all about that. It's so, I'm so funny. Is it your mom like, or what's Lindsay? Funny is it's all the way off. No, it's the not. It's on. I can no, hear it. It's not off. <laughs> dun, dun. It's making her nuts. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, so what's going on with this? Oh, hang on. Let's get through the rest of these, and then we'll. Um, Okay, back to bed, feeling one's organs liquefy real time is interesting. All right, oh we'll my see. goodness. He's not feeling it. Did anybody see that bust? Hey, hey, pod racing was rad. You are wrong, sir. <laughs> I bet he loves Jar Jar Binks. Fifth oh. element future would be okay. I want a multi pass. Yes. Right, go back to bed, buddy. Yes. Feel it's better. Nice. Fifth Feel element. Better. My favorite movie. Uh, love the movie. Love the movie. But that future is disastrous, too. Flying cars at multiple twos. That's I, I disastrous. Maybe had flying cars. Just, there won't just, be flying cars. Just, that will never happen. Like, when are we going to get flying cars? I'm like, could you imagine? People forget to put gas in their vehicles. They, things will be dropping out of the sky on, in the building all, it, the all, time. You have to, all the time. All you have to do is go take one introductory flight lesson in a Cessna or a Piper Cub, and you will understand why flying cars, flying cars will cars never work. Know. There is so <laughs> much work, effort, responsibility, personal personal responsibility that is required to go fly a goddamn aircraft over people yeah yeah I, i've done it i know how to do it i was talking to spike about it today uh, from that airport i used to take lessons there's no way flying cars ever happen unless like somebody else controls them and they're all just like drones I mean, and I like the, something uber, else. the uber hella car thing that looks cool that's a like, that's the big drone right yeah yeah really it's like you jump in the thing from lax and it'll take you to downtown in like five minutes like Oh, yeah, because it's physically possible. Yeah, just, if you can pick someone up, fly them through the air and space and, and put them down, down somewhere else, it's totally possible. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, you think that's happened? I say that's the Cybertruck times a million. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Do you think the Cybertruck will happen, speaking of the Tesla exhibit? Uh, Sir. Hey, man, he's Elon Musk. <laughs> he's the closest thing we have to a Bond villain. <laughs> he's just like choosing to do good stuff at the moment. I don't know what he's up to, but <laughs> <laughs> I love when people post Elon Musk stuff, and I just I click on it just out of curiosity. I'm like, is he a villain yet? No, no, he just bought. I don't even care about any of that. I just say that truck will never happen ever. Yeah, I agree with. I'm you. I'm not saying Tesla will never put out a truck. A truck. That fucking truck will never happen. I, I mean, they were the ones that kind of I think brought that like '80s cyberpunk style back to modern car. Like you saw the Hyundai. What they call the thing? The '74. I love that thing. That, that was awesome. But you're giving Elon Musk credit for that? No. But what I'm saying <laughs> is like that, like it. Well, like that cyberpunk styling was like, okay, guys, here's the extreme. And everybody like ate it up. We know that probably won't happen. 
But yeah, but also it, it like will because that cars. Genesis concept that I was I was looking at with Magnus and we were both looking. He's like, yeah, but they'll never make it. And I was like, I know they probably won't. Into production. Mm-hmm. That's, so I mean, that's what do we know? Like, what's the other one too? The uh, the EV SUV that has the square LED headlights and the taillights. The Ionic thing. Yeah, the, the Ionic. I love the Ionic. Yeah. Cool. Also, eighty ritual. Yeah, that's it's why I like it. It looks like yeah. a. Yeah, like a modern vo- electric Volkswagen. Yeah, like I mean the Volkswagen bus. Like, <laughs> oh, I like that one a lot. I'm excited for that. I just wasn't wearing electric. <laughs> <laughs> I saw at the LA Auto Show, like I saw. It I feel the- like that whole rig has got to have that. <laughs> Man, I I was never into Volkswagen buses. Um, my dad is obsessed, like the with a '95 window. 32 window, I think. <laughs> so I think it's a 30, 23 30, window. 30, 30 95 30. windows. I, I was like, you should see this bus. I, no, I say that because every time we talk about it. <laughs> There's more like, and more windows. I had 25 windows. 106 windows, windows no, in there. I'm like, I don't care. I'm not going to look it up. And then I saw one. I was like, that's a lot of windows. <laughs> that's a lot of windows. And I'm like, I can see the number changing. But, I mean, yeah. I mean, also, was, some of them have the slats. And I thought they used to count the slats. So I thought it was that. And I thought there were too many, too. And they're like, no, no, no. That's not a 21 window or whatever the heck it is. Uh, it's the one with the, like, safari windows around yeah, the top yeah, and all the that. Top, yeah, okay, yeah. Cause, and and then once I did, it's like, once you know, then it's easy to spot. But I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, I, And, you know, it's funny because I'm kind of getting some of that now. Where it's like, particular brands, I was like, I respect the brand. I like the brand. Now you have to learn. But now them. I'm like learning. And, you know. Because the guy who owns it's one of your customers. Well, the Porsche, you know, like the Porsche, man, you Porsche guys, man. Chassis code 991993, but it's still 911. What? <laughs> it's like, just saying. You Porsche saying. guys. You Porsche guys. How guy. dare you, GTI sir? Guy, you know? I, how dare you put me in a box? <laughs> I hate that. I can't believe you, of all people, just put me in a box. Oh, no. oh I mean, you're in a box. You're in a I, Porsche. You Porsche guys. <laughs> I'm gonna write a movie. He's like, oh, Eddie Murphy's gonna be in it. Guys. Did you watch You People? We just saw it the other day. It's on Netflix. I did. What did you think? Oh no, didn't like it. No, you didn't like it. I didn't like it because I felt like it was just too hard trying to hit each note of what. Oh, it, this is what it's like to be a black person. Yeah, this is well, what it's like to be a white person just, reacting to a black just, person. Yeah, yep. it was just okay. Interesting. I, I see because I enjoyed it from the other perspective, but what the fuck do I know? I I mean it wasn't like it's just like I don't think it to me. It's a it was making fun of the ooh because here's my thing. It's like if I walk into a, a different uh, like a, a say for example I sit down at a table right and I'm having dinner with people from different ethnicity or back, mm-hmm. different background. Mm-hmm. The stereotypical comical stuff that you would engage in is like not real life. You would ask probably genuine questions or make sure that you're respecting, you know, people's traditions or something properly, not just oh, like you wouldn't show up to a, a formal like our dinner or something like that, knowing it's necessary. It'd just be like, I oh, mean, yeah, I'm gonna date your daughter. I'm, and I'm saying, like, you see what yeah, I'm saying? I get it. I like get you it. Would show but I also with apply. Some respect that, and, I hear you. And, I also apply that this is an Eddie Murphy movie, and I'm like applying. Uh, coming to America and all that other stuff. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's sort of a caricature so that the people who need to get this message get it. And what's sad is most of those people still miss the message. You think? Absolutely. That bums me people, out. People miss the message from Get Out. People miss the message like they miss well, the message. Well, you're not going to get everybody. Well, but even then, We, we like, would love that to be the case. Yeah, but it's, you know, like the general concept, concept of the film or the idea is like, this is what it means. And then some people are like, oh, didn't get out. I'm like, how did you, but how did you not get that at all if you saw we all saw the same movie and right you know what i'm saying it's like i don't know well different experiences bring up different shit it's the, it's what we talked about before about the cartoons true it's the exact same thing uh i just think of jonah hill and when we talked about this on the show the other day oh well, you were talking about his the one with his psychiatrist on netflix as well yeah i was what's that called Stuts. Stuts, yeah. yeah we were talking about that and you know she worked with him when he was a kid i mean she oh. opened super bad Oh wow! Oh. So those are written to her from the, that time. That's why it's all old and faded. Oh, well, that's and cool. I remember asking me about my wiener. What was the movie he was in? He was like his one of his first movies. Accepted. <laughs> she Accepted, worked on, she yes. worked on that one too. I loved that yep. movie. I, I can't even tell you how many times I've used that line. <laughs> well, anyway, the fact that he wrote and produced this thing, I and I've worked with him as well, and I know him to be like a more enlightened. Like that was not his goal. His goal was to fucking move the needle in the right direction. And if if you don't think he did, I would love to know why, so that if I see him again, I can tell him that perspective. I, I mean, not from you personally, but just take, like so that he can hear it from someone. I mean, if, 
I here's the thing. What I think he did was great with film. It just in the real world consumer, it, like it doesn't. To me, it didn't translate. Like I saw what you're trying to do, but in the real world, it's it's a completely different engagement of how it goes down. Because in those cases, what was comical in the movie usually it's like volatile real situations. And yeah. Somebody trying to be in one of those real world situations and come at it that way would probably, you know, be taken as disrespectful or such such. What's the one with Bernie Mac and Ashton Kutcher that it's guess, like a remake oh, of guess who's guess remake dinner. of uh, Guess Who's Coming yeah. to Dinner exactly yeah. with Sidney Poitier. Did you see that one? Like it's like ten years uh, yeah, ago or whatever. I remember that when it came out. Yeah, and that was um, who's Bernie Mac? <laughs> Bernie Mac fan. Oh, he's he uh, the best. Denim like a jean. He was comedy. <laughs> Um, so good, so good. But uh, it, there's that. Uh, there's a few things in that, like when she brings him home, and it starts uh, black jokes, white jokes. They start that whole thing, and like, no, no, go ahead, tell another one. And he's like, all right, okay, yeah. And then it's just like it's he's ridiculous. Just steps in shit, right? Yeah. And do you remember that whole scene? I kind of lived it a little bit. Um, lived it. My mom, my mom, my stepdad Craig is white, and I remember the first time he met. My side of the family, we all mm. and it's, it's you watched it happen. It's a little, yeah, it's a little like that, but it's like at the same time, it's like he wasn't coming in there like all y'all eating fried chicken, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, excuse me, but that's what I'm saying. Where it's like, I get for the sake of the movie, it's comical, but sometimes people take things in movies and try to apply them to real life, saying uh. if I was in this situation, that's how I would engage, and that's usually where I feel like some of those uh, conflicts happen. You know, mm -hmm. it's like they're like, well, I saw this movie. And I saw it. It, was like, it worked in the movie. It wouldn't this, work in yeah, real it's like, life. This isn't, real, this isn't real life. It's like, you know, people are people. You know, you kind of have to, in real life, just level with them and, and engage in a manner that is both receptive and welcoming, I think, you know, um, versus like trying to imitate something from a movie in real life might get you. Yeah. You know, might get you and, a, and a mimic like me, or maybe even you, because you have that ability too. That can get you into trouble because you're like, no, I was just quoting that movie. And you're like, but you just said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens all the time. And it's like, oh, geez, but three of us totally know what I meant, and then five are like, that's totally unacceptable. Yeah, totally <laughs> it's like, no, no, it's like, well, I, I get where he was going. You know what I'm saying? You can't. I don't like to throw stones at people because you never know. I think for the most part, people tend to lead with the best intentions. It's just they may not know that particular room or world that they're stepping into. I think you're coming from a very open place with that. Yeah, I think I, mean, I think that's you being in a good place. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I've been in those situations. I've seen people in situations, and it's like, you know, like in in the mid of race wars, it's like not me going, okay, yes, like I am a black man, I'm proud to be a black man, but it's like I don't dislike someone else because of their ethnicity or something. That's like that's throwing the whole stone backwards, you know what right? I mean? It's like, um, but you know, people need to treat and love people as they would want. <laughs> Can I ask a question just because that literally just came up? I've always had a problem with the term, and I'm one of these guys. I just I don't have problems with the fundamentals of things. I have the problems with triple should have two P's. I'm I'm the guy who like I fucking hate the word triple because it's tripal. Um, <laughs> I've never thought of that, and that is I will not sleep tonight. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna call you at three o'clock and I'm still thinking about triple. So I've always had a problem with the term reverse racism because I'm like. Racism is a term for someone who has a problem with another race. I don't think it's only a white term. I think it's a yeah. anybody for anything I mean, yeah. term. Am I right you about that? You can't reverse that. I'm fortunate like... that I have friends from all of the spectrums and backgrounds pretty much on the planet. And, you know, the consensus is the same. It's like, I think it was the old way of thinking. Okay. I, I think It's an outdated term. I, well, also, I think it's just... In reverence. But even when it was a working, I didn't. It didn't make sense to me. Yeah. No. I mean, when it was working, I, when it was a, when, when it was, it was used. Yeah. When it was, yeah. No. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, nowadays it's great because you know, I th as we've moved forward, forward to people, I think the one thing about technology we're talking about bringing it back earlier is that people can get information or learn things relatively quickly. Like if I don't know, I can watch a YouTube video how to do this, or if I'm going to, you know, eat a particular food, you know, learn about the culture or something. Um, but I mean, we're becoming more of a melted pot on the planet, and and that is because of technology. Mm -hmm. It's like I can be sitting here right now in California and Facetime somebody in the UK, or be in a group chat where people are all around the world, and it makes the world a lot smaller. But it also allows people to like engage with people and understand and learn. 
Whereas I feel like in the past, before we had technology, it was like, oh, well, we're going to send this message by Raven, and your people of where you were were what you stuck with. You you're know right. And, that, and so... Tribalism. Yeah, tribalism. It's like you're, you're, you're grouped with the people that you are born with, you're raised with, who look like you, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and nobody ever leaves this town. I mean, yeah. And I, I mean, I feel like it should be a requirement in school that they're like, you have to go outside of, you have to travel, like, you have to leave, you must. Because you get a you different learn. perspective. And it, but I mean, like, I feel like the greatest thing on this planet is genuinely people. Because everything from cars to food to art design, it's all made from human beings, mm -hmm. you know? And we are the creation. We are the creative. And, you know, it's like everything should have an outlet or an opportunity to be, you know, there and show things. Like women in motorsports. I feel like women in motorsports and in the car scene bring an added level of competition and creativity mm -hmm. that would not be there without them. And for whatever insecurities, I feel like, well, yeah, girl. yes, it should be included. If she's faster than you, get better. You know what I'm saying? Like, plus, plus the girls I know in racing are awesome. Yeah. Lynn Woodward, Emmy Hall, freaking Sarah Trimble. Like the girls I know who can drive, Sarah Fairfield. Yeah. Um, all of the girls I know who are in the car, like they're all awesome. I'm, I'm in the car solely because my mom got me in the cars. Uh, do you know All Girls Garage? You know Bogey from that? I, or do you no, know that you are aware yeah, of it? Yeah, she's going to be yeah. here soon. We've been going back and forth for a while, and she's going to be here at the end of the month. So awesome! Yeah, that's going to be cool. Yeah, my I mean, like my mom. <laughs> I, all the time, people say like, "Oh man, you had you the car? Did your dad do the car?" I was like, "No, nah, I used to go to the arcade. My mom would hold me up, and um, and let me play it outrun." Oh yeah, and she would, driving she through would, the ocean. Actually, I have, I have a picture of that. Is that is my favorite photo of my mother and I? Um, is is that photo of? Um, my mom holding me up. My first night driving to Los Angeles, I uh, uh, flew into Los Angeles and rented the car, and it was a convertible. This was 1999. It was a convertible Eclipse when the Eclipse was still the four-cylinder. Oh, it was yeah. before the one with the, the bear claw on the side. Oh, yeah. It was one of those. The, uh, the, uh, the Eagle Talon <laughs> Eclipse. Okay. <yeah. laughs> and uh, driving through, and I was staying downtown. Why is irrelevant. Total accident <laughs> on Priceline.com. <laughs> but I was driving downtown on the 110, underneath all the, it, the all the buildings and all of the overpasses and the bridges and everything. And I go, oh, my God, I'm on the road from OutRun. And it totally is the oh, road wait. from OutRun. You go right through there, and then somehow, magically, you're down by the beach, and then you're driving through the ocean or whatever. But when you're going through the city, it's downtown Los Angeles on the 110. <laughs> like oh, a cartoon what? version of it. Oh, wow. I never – wow. I never even I – Oh, I thought you liked that game and had some sort of oh, personal connection with it. I, I thought maybe now I just shared and I feel stupid. <laughs> well, now I'm going to go back and play the game. That's no, I what feel I'm like saying. an I'm idiot. I'm going to go back and play the game now. But thought I could relate. It's, Outrun was a fun game, but I mean more card games and stuff like that. But she, yeah, she was the reason I got the cars. She got Outrun me. was the Ferrari, right? It was the Ferrari was, Testarossa. Yeah, Ferrari Testarossa. And they had both the stand-up and the sit-down version of it at the arcade. Yeah, so I had the stand-up. We were the stand-up version. And um, she'd hold me up and she'd work the gas pedals and I'd do the steering wheel and like, that was just fun. Like, I mean, my funnest moment is, you know, that, really, as far as I can remember. And um, How old were you? It's like, definitely young. I'd say somewhere between, like, nine, younger than that, maybe. Um, Your mom was holding you up at nine. Your mom's I wasn't strong. always. I wasn't always a big kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even mean that. I'm just thinking me at nine. I don't know. Nine's my mother older, holding me. I also can't picture her either, so. Yo, but yeah, I mean, like that was cool. And she she was worried because one day I got this sticker that had a skull with two pistons behind, like the crossbones. And she was like, "What is this?" And I was like, "Oh, yeah, that's cool because it's like automotive." And she was like, "No." And I remember she went to work, and one of her colleagues was in the cars, and she was like, "My son's in the cars, and this is what he did." And I don't like. So he was like, "Gran Turismo," and she mm. went and got a PlayStation. She's like, "Here." Throw your sticker away, and I was like, "All right, wow!" <laughs> and then that was my introduction to Grand Turismo. Fine, GT2. Uh, Nautis, Mr. Nautis says today's agenda. Today's agenda, my man. And Mike Chisholm <laughs> says the new Scout. Hey, go back to bed, you weirdo. The new Scout EV looks wicked cool. I don't disagree. I have not seen the Scout EV. Looks like it looks like the old Scout, but it's electric. Oh, okay, okay. See, I mean, like, I don't the off-road EV. I'm a little worried about because I'm just like, mm, how am I charging if I'm out in the wilderness? And That's where you charge. I don't know. When you're outside, are you kidding? I'm not trying to be off the grid in an EV Jeep. 
Oh, okay. Hoping I'm gonna get back to civilization. Oh, to me, this is the easiest thing in the world. There's literally, you don't have gas out there, but you have literally tons of sun. <laughs> yeah, you will but, never like get the, stuck but the sun because of fuel. Yeah, but the sun isn't as quick to charge as like if it was plugged into a source. No, but you'll never get stuck. I mean, we just watched that movie with the guy on the moon and you just put the drive it around and then you lay all those things out. And I don't mean for everyday use, but I mean like this is, I, I wouldn't have range anxiety on an electric. On a Jeep? You would, like, so if you're going, my thing is like you go off-road, right? Do you know how long it would last? You're literally using it the best. Those batteries would last forever in that way. Don't you think? Crawling in a Jeep off-road? Because what I mean, it uses a lot of torque. It's going to be a lot of draw on the energy. If you're towing anything, if you're loaded down with gear. The, my thing is it's like the range with EVs. The only like problem with that right? is keeping it moving at 80 miles an hour for long periods of time. That's where the battery goes down. I, I will not. Go All right. off road solely dependent on EV. I just All right. I can't. I wow. don't trust it. I don't trust it. I mean, would you Do trust, you swim would in the you ocean? Trust the EV airplane? Oh, in a heartbeat for the same reason. It's constantly getting fuel up there. It's being refueled one hundred percent of the time. You're weirdo. I get it. I don't know. Yeah, to me it's just the fuel thing. It's like I can put gas in this, but to be dependent on I don't know. I don't know. Certain things. Uh, okay. Certain things I'm not quite. Yeah, a little conservative over little, there. Little conservative. He's like, why aren't we far enough yet? Oh, hey, wait a huh? second, an electric plane. <laughs> wait. Well, I just two like, seconds ago, you're like, <laughs> no, I well, cars, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. you plane. I don't know. That makes so much more sense to me than rocket fuel, flammable <laughs> rocket fuel. <laughs> Are you kidding? Hey, look, I don't, hey, I'll take my L. What do you know about flying? Do, know about flying? <laughs> do you know how it works? I do. Oh, okay. Because it's all just engineering. It's all just physics. Yeah, like, physics. once somebody like figured out the magic to it, like, it's kind of hard to crash one. Speed, wind, lift. The new planes, like the the real, the ones that were, people are flying on now, are so stupid to fly in the flight simulator because they don't do anything but fly. So you funny. can't do anything with them. You can't go out there because, like, nope, I'm just going to keep <laughs> flying. So... I actually did kind of do some flying a little bit. Okay. Um, I went to the Kenny Hawk thing as experience as a kid, and that was, blew my mind. Um, but first in flight. Yes. Right. Yes, I did. Yeah. There's a picture of me somewhere with a blue Cessna. It had the, that blue and yellow Cessna right next to it. But um, I is it got, North Carolina? Is that where it is? Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Yeah. 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 And. Um, but I got the flight sim right afterwards. Mm -hmm. And they, if you had the old Windows flight sim, they had those, like, un impossible challenges. You were supposed to be, like, a oh. professional pilot if you could do it. Yes. And, like, put the 747 on the barge. Yes. Yeah, I could do that. No problem. Yes. Yeah, no problem. They did have that. There was one. <laughs> then on an aircraft carrier land was on one. Aircraft, there was one where you had to fly, like, a, a commercial plane, which it didn't age well. But you had to fly a commercial plane through buildings. Oh, I remember that. And, and, and yeah. I think in, like, New York, I think. Mm, it might have been. So. <laughs> yeah. I think they may have removed that yeah, feature. Yeah, I think that one did wrong. Though. No, but there were all sorts of... Uh, that like was fun. Impossible challenges as a pilot. Whenever the Xbox 5... What is, what's the new one? <laughs> what are we on? X, <laughs> Xbox 99? The, the 2001 one. The one that looks like the uh, the black... You know, the just, cube? Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, it's the, just a black... The cube. Boom, 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 boom. You know, remember how many consoles there used to be? And now we're down to like two? You, you're either Xbox there, or PlayStation. Were there... I mean, you're right. I mean, you Sega, Sega, Dreamcast. You had, you had the Dreamcast. You had the Atari, Oh, but Sega was Dreamcast. Yeah, you, you had Atari. You had PlayStation. Nintendo. You had Nintendo. Yeah, like there were a lot more. Now it's just like I don't think they were two. really that many at the same time. To me, it always felt like two were competing at the same time, and then there was other and just ancillary stuff. Because I remember, I remember it was Game Boy, and then it was like you had the handheld, the Game Boy, Game Gear. <laughs> you're so cute. I was a kid, and it was all the not the Pong. Like, yeah, Pong. Yeah. Pong. I had a Game Boy, but I feel like a lot of the competition shit is stuff no one bought. Yeah. Like, they didn't want the third coolest thing. Yeah, and what's the thing they have now that, that it's not Twitch. a... Twitch. Switch. The Switch? Yeah. Nintendo Switch? The Nintendo or Switch? Switch? Yeah, it's like, which is essentially Flips. a Game Boy that's... Oh, I think it's like the Sega other one, the Sega Lynx. It's more like the Lynx. Yeah, and then there's now, you've seen it where you can just buy these adapters that click on various phones and they turn your phone into one. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a controller that goes around your phone. It's, yeah, like, it's, a it's like the drone. It's yeah. like the drone so, thing. So, I mean, yeah. like, consoles, man. That was cool. Anyway, when, 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 when the 2001 Xbox came out, Flight Simulator ran on that. Oh, so so right. we got it. And, uh, and I love it. 
I'm still such a oh, nerd. Right. I'll, I'll fly around Hawaii just to relax. Just to fly, right? Just to I, relax. Like, I'll go around Kauai, which we know every square inch of, and I'll, we'll just go to our favorite places just to relax. Because it's, it's a real world maps. I'm not with Grand Theft Auto. Like, I'll just, I'll just go get the airplane and just fly around. <laughs> I don't really do anything anymore. Like, just, like, my friend's like, why don't you just play the game again? I was like, I've already beat it, like, twice, so I'm just going to fly. Just gonna fly around. In Grand Theft Auto? Yeah. That's funny. I've done that, too. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto, fly, drive around. That's like all the stuff I can do in real life. Well, I'm just flying around. But. I, either, I either really relax doing something like that, flying, or like riding a bike up in the mountains, or like a, or a mountain bike, because oh, it's really yeah. fun, or off-roading at yeah. slow pace. Uh, or I will just cause as much mayhem Damn, as, as you, possible. Yeah, like five stars as quickly as possible, blow up everything in sight. <laughs> if I can lure like 100 cars in a, in a tunnel or something yeah, it, with a bus on one side and a truck on the other and just <laughs> rocket just launch rocket the shit out of it. Oh, I'm, I'm totally Whenever good. it's the chain reaction where the, the machine slows down because it can't handle <laughs> all the things it's doing, it's I all, love it. I'm about to crash. <laughs> The fans go, <laughs> the lights in your house. Like, <laughs> yeah, the Christmas story. They got to do the, the atomic backup. <laughs> oh, we got to power this out. Oh, my God. All right. Well, for a show that we didn't have a show, we have gone very long just shooting the shit. Um, but I'm looking very forward to, uh, to I don't know if we even got to talk about it, but uh, I, I there, 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 but there definitely is, will be like, a new space. This is our always, always our engagement. I feel like it's just everything so. We're a good hang. Yeah, I love hanging with you guys. People who are a good hang are welcome here anytime. I love that. I will and you literally live here. like a mile away. I do. Not even. Which, a couple which was blocks funny away. You're like, oh, this is the studio. And I was like, oh, let me check the address. And I was like, the local lights. Like, where the house are you at? Yeah. Can <laughs> I see it from my you? patio? What else? Yeah. It's like, I'm on the other side of that Toyota dealer. But yeah. You're on the other side of Toyota? Uh, so if you continue Lancashire up and you get to, what is that, Lancashire Riverside? I don't know. Let's make sure everyone can see it on the map here. <laughs> yeah, map, yeah. It's like I'm literally maybe a mile away from you. Awesome. So we'll, I'll come bug you. We have the same restaurants, and we're on the same the same like Grubhub lists and everything. Grubhub list. The, oh, and waffles. That's that's a good one. And that's waffles. Good. Oh, have you not been and waffles? Uh-uh. What? Never heard of it. That's <laughs> the street from it. What? Bro, are you serious? Oh, it's towards Universal. <laughs> It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's towards Universal the on the right. No, we've never gone there. Oh, it smells great when we leave man. early in the morning, though, when we're going to a car thing where yeah. we got to get on the 101. Oh, man. It, it smells is, great. It's one of and there's always people there. Places. They got that little patio out front. Yeah, it's, it's Yellow one of my chairs. Place, breakfast places and, and waffles. There's some kind of space right across the street where they're always shooting something. Like all of the production trucks are out front, and I have no idea what. There's like a that club black, or a little, little gray yeah. or black building. It's, yeah, it's a club. Because I've driven by the street at night, and it's packed at night. And, but it's just weird. Oh. There's no windows. It's just this door. So that's why I couldn't tell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that what makes it looks sense like inside, cool. but I've been driving. Music's playing Even loud. if it's a bar, it makes sense why they would shoot there as a production. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Can't even tell you drive by. Gotcha. It's empty. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I need to come up to Good Vibes soon. I just been Well, you know it'll always be there. Working. I mean, uh, hopefully nobody will buy Newcombs and whatever. I mean, hopefully somebody does buy Newcombs and opens it. Hopefully nobody buys it and closes it. I think Haggerty should buy Newcombs. Oh. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) they've got the money. Let's do it. it, Buy Newcombs, create a staple. To me, that's that, man. Newcombs can't go away. I I hope it doesn't ever. But, you know, there was the rumor in the beginning when, like, a private party was going to buy it for a crap ton of money, and they were going to probably shut it and make it, like, a private residence. And the that would, fact that that, that went away made us all very nightmare. happy. Yeah. That would be the biggest nightmare. Somebody's like, oh, I just bought this house. And you wake up on Saturday morning, there's 90 cars in your front yard. I don't think <laughs> oh, I think it would have gone. You know. I think it would have gone the other way. I think they would have bought it and we would have just found a fucking K rails around it yep. one day oh, while, they, uh, while they knocked it down to build their. If they were going to spend fifteen million on that, they would have probably built knocked it down to put a twenty million dollar house up there. So I'd have been like, "Good morning, neighbors. Heard you bought new cups. We're up sitting here. Yeah, <laughs> I've the coffee and donuts in your yard. <laughs> I usually just take a leak back here. Is that all right? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> 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 I was like I just, just came up, can't get a two time anymore. So. <laughs> yeah, Casey uh, Stoner Bowl. Right, you guys got you guys got breakfast? You guys got any food? <laughs> just a bear. Mm, yeah. All right. Uh, well, that's what's going on tomorrow, GVBC, <laughs> at the old Newcombs Ranch. Uh, somebody buy it. Somebody buy it and be friendly. Yes. Um, you've got the you've got the inside track to the Haggerty people. Plant a seed, buddy. I, 
we, we're finally coming around to the, the if somebody wants us to be the face of it we will we didn't want to do that for a long time but now that everyone's like look you got enough friends that if everybody puts in a million bucks like you could they, they would fund it and I was like <laughs> we would always say we don't want that that but yeah. now we're like I just don't want to live there. I don't want to be an innkeeper. I don't want to be Bob Newhart. I don't want to deal with those problems. I, I've got, we have our own problems. I mean, like getting supplies up there, getting stuff up there, and then, of course, in the event. Oh, I don't want to deal with, no, I don't want to talk about it. Or forest fires. You're, now, you're, now you're going the opposite. Now you're, now you're, telling, you're talking people out of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things against it. I think that's why it's still available. <laughs> Uh, but tomorrow, that's where we'll be. Um, Super Bowl Sunday. Holy cow. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday this Sunday. That doesn't mean anything to me. I have no idea who's playing. <laughs> but the Motoring Club is having a, a thing over there. They're having a Super Bowl party. You go to the you know their website, and I think it's the tickets or something. I don't remember how it works. Or you pay at the door. I don't know. Whatever it is. But uh, they're doing a thing. We might pop over to that, although I doubt it because I don't care about football. And I don't like being around drunk people or drunk people on the roads. So. We tend also, to stay home on like New Year's and New like Year. Super Bowl, any of those big drinking holidays, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. New no Year's, thanks. New Year's this year was the first one I was like, man, I'm in LA for New Year's. What do I do? And I was in bed by like nine o'clock. Yeah. And everybody's like, I woke up and I was like, hey, I'm like, bro, I was passed out, man. Out. I'm done. But nope. we're up first thing in the morning to drive the day after. And that's where it's at for me. Because every, every, all the drunk people are home and sleep and in jail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the roads are clear. Yeah, or you can yeah. spot the ones who are still drunk because everyone else is straight as an arrow. True. Also true. Um, and then uh, next week we're back with uh, Fireball. Tim will be here and somebody else I can't remember. Maybe just Fireball. I don't know. <laughs> Fireball's enough. Isn't Fireball enough? Uh, oh, yeah, that's Lindsay. Right. All right. Well, I'll deal with that later. Did we do all the stuff? We do all the stuff. I think we did. Are we good? Do we have any events to talk about? I'm, <laughs> I'm hanging out. What are you doing this weekend? What am I doing this weekend? Oh. Uh... Not GBBC tomorrow because you'll be at work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I just. It's I, funny how all the car people can do it because it's count. It counts as work for them. One, well, one of the one of the first meetings I had, my boss was like, "You know, we're going to events." And I said, "Absolutely." You know, I, I did a lot of events. And I said, and I told him, "Oh, because like, they want you to have a presence." Yeah, I was like, "As a matter of fact, gotta do it. he's like, is anybody in California working?'" And I was like, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> I was like, "You just what? You, you adapt, yeah?" Because well, I mean. I, did East you say Coast? anything there, or did you just kind of ha, 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 and then about, and I was like, did you dance around it? And then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, it's because the East Coast doesn't have that culture. You know, the Midwest doesn't have that culture. It's like oh. only, like, California is like, you know, hey, we can either remote or adapt and make our schedules function. I got you. Things. I, um, I didn't know what you were saying. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, lo- I got lost. Yeah, so it's like the, um, you know, being able to attend events like that, which do kind of double as work events and social events. But That's all I meant. You work in this business now. I mean, professionally, this is work. Yeah. That's why all of those other guys are able to be up there, whether they're in a press car or not. True. Also it's true. still, this is a mixer. <laughs> true. Also true. No, I mean, I love going. I, I have Automotive mixer. But not hey. an event. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Not an event. Just, not an event. It's not a goddamn it. group drive. It's true. not whatever else. Any, it's not a meet. Everyone's like, what time is the meet? I'm like, I don't. Did you say you're getting like <laughs> crap from people of, on social media because they're like, oh, how do I go to this thing? And Definitely not because I don't talk about it, but there have been people who have been upset that they did not get a timely response on the GVBC page from somebody being like, you know, what time is your shit at? You know, like, how come it doesn't say, you know? <laughs> you're like offended, really. It, it, it escalated because they didn't get a response in time or whatever. Yeah, but I don't. That's not, I don't, I just don't this know. isn't a, that's not, you're, yeah, you like have the like, wrong idea for what this is, and I'm think, guessing you might not like it when you get there, so maybe let's. I think I had been on the Good Vibes for a year, and then I was like, oh, there's an Instagram, because <laughs> it was just word of mouth. Everybody was like, you yeah. gotta go. And it was, and the cool thing I like about it is because if you're not a real enthusiast, well, I mean. Mm, Whoa, oh here we go. Here's, well, I mean, let's be honest, your street takeover dudes, they're not getting up in the early, like you said, early in the morning, and really enjoying that drive to go it's like people who are who go you know it's a mission you have to be you know dedicated to get up to angel's crest yeah you know it's not like oh i'm in this park a lot and i can just drive down the street it's like it's a what 40 minutes from the base i don't know so like, depends yeah sure yeah, but that's the thing it's like as enthusiast, we never think drive at your own pace that's no the idea. first time i've ever thought about the time it takes to go up to nichols because it's I'm not worried about the time. I'm focused on the drive. You know? Yeah, the people who blare the music and do the other things, like well, on the, I don't, I have no issues with that. I have no, I, you, everyone should enjoy it however they wish. 
but I can't relate to that at all because we're like windows down, connected with the environment. Yeah. We're radio so off. oh radio. No, we don't have it. There's no radio. Yeah, we stripped all that shit out because we didn't want it. Oh uh, yes, like yeah. no screens, no nothing. It's just what's outside the windows, and uh, it's, it's so great. Out. It's so beautiful going to Vangelis Chris. I think, I think that's a, it's, a, it's the lookout though. I think that's another reason I like that mini is it's got the big greenhouse like an old car where you're yeah. just looking out the window. Yes. Anything inside is small and happy, but you the rest of life is outside. Everything. Oh well. Uh, all right. Well, this has been Thursday, February 9th from five to almost seven p.m. Holy crap! This oh, wow. has been a long one. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> No, we're just shooting the shit. You got a great energy. I feel like I got high from sitting here just talking I don't to you. I'm hanging out with you guys. I'm right. serious. Well, that's mutual. Uh, so we follow you online at uh, what? Um, my Instagram handle is get behind the wheel at G E T B T W. Yep. And, and there, all my links are on there. YouTube channel and all stuff's there. And follow Haggerty Garage and Social. And follow Haggerty Garage and Social and Haggerty Motorsports. <laughs> and Haggerty Motorsports. And Haggerty. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I was like, oh, what the hell the, is that? All the handles. All what, the well, handles. what the hell is Haggerty Motorsports? Did that pop up overnight? Did I miss something here? Oh, man. There's a lot of channels, but those are my key ones. The main Haggerty one, the Garage and Social. Well, let me follow the Haggerty the Motorsports, Motorsports one. one. What is that all about? Oh, you follow Ray Schaefer? We love Ray Schaefer. Ray Schaefer, formerly of Porsche. Did you know Ray Schaefer? Yeah. Made a move? He just left. Well, I guess you do know because you have the spot upstairs. Okay. Great. More to come. More to come on that. There's so much cool stuff. Like, that's the one thing I, oh, I can't talk about. It there's so much going on. But, like, conversations that I'm fortunate to have and, you know, all these enthusiasts who are contacting, it's just, it's incredible. The motorsports and the car scene in L.A. is well alive. And the future is bright. There's some cool stuff coming out soon that's going to be really cool. You have not no just, idea. Not just Haggard. I'm, I'm just speaking cars in, in general. general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cars in general. There's so much cool stuff coming out. Uh, all right, so we did all the plugs. All right, love you. We love you. Love we us. all love you at home. Please love one another. And uh, that's it? Yeah. Nighty night. <laughs> Don't let the bed bugs bite. It's that time. It's that, we've been on the air forever. Uh, good night, Irene. <laughs>